Hey, we're live! Hey, we're we made live. it! What's going on? We made on, it! Guys? Episode 100! 100! F oh my gosh. And I see that in the chat, in the chat, everybody's already representing pretty well. Um, we got a, we have over a hundred people watching as we go live. That is amazing. That's perfect. Thank you guys. So the plan for tonight, uh, before we get into anything else, plan for tonight, we'll go over a lot of stories for the first half, be ready to go, everything that's news in the world of NASCAR. Uh, and then as we go in, we'll review the race, all that, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Uh, then we'll do the lightning round, and then we'll have Haley on after that. Uh, but I, I think there's, some, like, I heard there was another surprise before we started with that, Danny. That's right. Uh, yeah. Someone is right over here with something. We got to celebrate episode hey! one. It's a cake. That's awesome. So it's a cake from our Bristol trip, guys. The first time yep. everyone we'll officially candles, met. It. it was that Sunday too, man. It was crazy, man. Yeah, uh, and even that, even that same weekend, we had a chocolate chip cookie cake, and here we are again with another that's one. Yeah, right. so, that's right. We did. So Claudia Three. got it done. That was crazy. So before we uh, risk these uh, candles hitting into this uh, recording equipment, <laughs> let's blow out the candles. Three, Make two, wish. one. <sighs> That's right, a hundred episodes, and, and then there, there's a cake better. Hundred episodes of NWP and a nice picture of all all four of us. Just look at the look it. at the way we're posed. It's all in like I know I love that funny picture. way too. That's it's funny. like yeah, Darian's like this, and then yeah. me and Danny are Joe Cool, and then Eric's just trying to stay in screen. Yeah, he's trying to crouch down too. But no, that is crazy. Thank you so much, Claudia, for getting that done. And yeah, thank what, you, Claudia. What kind of cake is it though? Uh, cookie. It, this cake. this is literally a chocolate chip cookie with like a bunch of icing. It looks like yeah. See, that's and really quick. Before we get into anything, we got already 161 watching. Lick that like button. Come That's on, guys. Right. Let's Lick get it. Lick the like button, guys. Episode 100, already well over 100. It's insane. Man, there's okay, so there's a lot of stuff to talk about, mm -hmm. but I think I, honestly, I think the first thing we should talk about is is the returns. More than anything, right. more than the race itself. Ooh. Um first off, I think this one we should start off on a great note for, for this episode. Ryan Newman, according to Bob Pachris, uh, will be returning to the number six car when racing resumes, uh, and he has a playoff waiver. I mean, he's only, I think, 59 or 57 points out mm -hmm. right now, so we can yeah. still point his way in. Um, so, yeah, he that's something that's like really big. I, I want to ask you guys, how do you think Ryan Newman is going to do uh, coming back now, whenever we come back, which we'll talk to that in a bit, too? You know, you know, personally, I think he'll do a lot better than what people think. Um, I think it's yeah. like I think it's putting a lot of pressure on him. However, to say like, oh, he's going to be a playoff contender right away, I think that's doing too much. We don't even know how he's going to be. I mean, he had a freaking serious head injury there, like a straight up brain injury. He took a car straight to the head, as a matter of fact, but his thickness blocked it. So what happened was, uh, you know, I mean, it's just like coming back from uh, from a, a serious head injury like that. I mean, it, you're never gonna be the same basically like i mean jared yeah. like he's he's an advocate when it comes to head injuries and stuff like that i mean he he's talking about it too and it makes me that you know it makes me be very thankful that hey i haven't had you know many serious head head injuries like that i, I don't even think i've ever had a freaking concussion before anyways knock on wood <laughs> yeah so yeah yet but yeah that, that might change but i mean I'm... other than that though i mean I, you know i mean just looking at other drivers you know uh, uh, steve park for example like i mean after he returned from his 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 series injury which included the head injury after that uh after that horrible wreck at uh at, at um, Darlington, um, I mean, you can understand that a driver is not going to necessarily be the same. So, I mean, but Newman looks a lot fit. He looks like he looks way more fit than he did when he was driving. So I, I, I'll give him that. So maybe he's working hard to try try and get in better shape and get back in that race car. And I, I don't know, man. I, I think um, he'll, he'll do really good, but I'm just going to hold off on the, you know, the quote unquote playoff, you know, contender talk. You know, I'll just... I'll just uh, wait on that. Yeah, I think if Roush Fenway could just put all their eggs into, like, one basket, I think, you know, to try to, you know, do good at least in one race, they may could put together one race where they could contend for a win with Newman. But uh, it's just, is it going to happen every week? Not too sure. But I think that if they can just pick one track that their strengths were at, they may they may have a shot at something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then a really quick one. Thank uh, Matt Aldrin for uh, the 199 super chat. Happy 100 episodes. Yes. Um, 
You know, I just realized Ooh. this too. I just realized this thanks, too. Thanks to oh. Stream Dev too for the ten dollars super oh, chat. Wow. Thanks guys for the hundred episodes of NASCAR controversies. <laughs> <laughs> hope to hope to see the podcast keep on rolling. Take care of yourselves. We're hoping for at least a hundred more. Yeah. Um, so thank you. We're what you're saying. Better. We're very young. We can go a long time with this. So. Exactly. And thank you for the over 200 watching. Be sure to like that like button. I just realized this too. So Ryan Newman, if the schedule is correct, and we will get into that later on in the show, but if it is correct, as some sources are saying it is, Darlington back-to-back uh, immediately that's for his, the first two races, that's ooh. his best track. That's his best track. I'm saying, I mean, his average finish is like, I think a 10.1 or 11.2. So he's averaging he's only- like a top 10 damn near every race. Well, and he's only 56 there. points out is uh, what we were corrected with in the chat, which is uh, thank you again for that. Mm. And the, the more I think about it, 56 points out is not even a full race. Yeah, that's if, not if you think about it, because no, it's you can get 60 points maximum in a race, 70 if it's if it's a Coke 600 or Daytona 500. So, you know, the, the more you think about it. If he were to get, say, 10 more stage points on average in those first two races at Darlington, uh, and to have a similar finish, he could easily make up 20 points right off the bat, be ready to go and and be right in the thick of the hunt after just three days. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that's that's huge, and especially being his best track, and it's not one of his best tracks, and it's not a track or it's not races that are going to be really long. We'll get into it in a little bit, but they're not going to be like a 500-mile Darlington race. I, I mean, it, if he is completely recovered and there isn't any real regression, he is really going to be somebody to look out for, especially if he's super motivated about it too. That that might not be the best thing for the competition. Honestly, personally, I think, you know, out of the gate, he'll be the best Roush driver. And that's saying a lot because I was really high on Chris Buescher. I think he'll perform yeah. at a very high level. I mean, it's not, I mean, when you really think about it, Roush racing, I mean, they're still not where they used to be in the in the early 2000s, not even close. But I mean, Chris Buescher, while he is off to a good start, he's not, you know, setting the world on fire. So the bar isn't isn't that high necessarily for Ryan Newman to come back. Yeah, and plus I think that's just you, you you think about his last victory that I can remember that uh, Phoenix race in 2017. That was a it's kind of like just a strategy win, even if they do something like that. You know, they could do anything. Wait, was it twenty? It was twenty seventeen, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's yes. right. Damn, damn, it's been it's been a while too. You see, you see, you guys don't remember the the old Ryan Newman, Rocket Man, from like the early two thousands. Like, I know a lot of you fans are like, "Well, what's the big deal?" Like with Newman, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm like, well, like Newman's a Hall of Famer, and you know, just off of the record, off of the number of polls alone, to me, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, over fifty polls in a career. Like, how many people? How many drivers in NASCAR do that? And, and it's not like it's at, like, you know, Daytona or Talladega. No, like, freaking Texas, Michigan. Uh, I mean, like, the fastest tracks uh, on the circuit. So, but, I mean, it's going to be good to have him back, man. I've, I've missed oh. him. And I heck, remember going back. Heck, I, I remember the first time I went to Atlanta in 2018, I watched Ryan Newman leading for the first bit of that race in the 31 mm-hmm. car. That's right. Yeah. But I remember, I, like, I was going back and looking at back at 2002 for my last video, and I didn't realize how before, at the, he raced at the start of that season the way that he was racing the last couple of years, sort of mid-pack, mm-hmm. had, but he had a lot of bad luck. But towards the end of that season, man, he was one of the hottest drivers on the on the circuit. And, you know, it's, it's like a ta- – tale of two stories for ryan newman it's either he's very very hot and good high performance mm-hmm. or it's where you know how he's been the last couple of years maybe some mid-pack teams runs mid-pack has bad luck has good luck whatnot and, and not to mention me he does not give get damn near enough credit for making stuart haas racing what they are today because a lot of people don't i mean they he kind of gets lost in history like when you talk about the team because of the recent success and because Danica came over while he was there and then Harvick, you know, winning the team's first championship. But I mean, remember when Newman left Penske that like, I remember like looking that, at that the was move. Big. like it was really big at the time because like Stewart was starting a new team. And remember at that time, like Haas, like he, like his tenure is as, as a, as a car owner before teaming up with Tony Stewart. Like it was just like a failure in the cup series to say the well, least. Like and I remember, else is not you know, it wasn't necessarily bad, but I mean, Newman should get a lot of credit for building I mean, the team up. I mean, he still got a couple of wins there. He won Phoenix the, and the a, Brickyard. And, tor- 
he 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 won the Brickyard and the Smurfs car, I think it was. Yeah, it was. And, yeah. And, and, and then he won at Phoenix, and I always loved that Tornadoes car he ran, and that one that was he, yeah. he won that one. The only reason I remember that is because of the Phoenix win and because of the Logano incident from 2010. Remember? Well, and when, if you remember, oh, go ahead. When Stuart Haas racing first started, I thought that Ryan Newman had the better paint scheme because like the Army cars mm-hmm. look good, yeah. the Tornadoes cars look good, they they, did. They, they, even. The first Haas car they ran looked like Dale Earnhardt's car. I thought mm-hmm. it looked pretty cool. Yeah. That was um, cool. And, and really quick, I'll, I'll get back to it for a second. But Keegan Schneider, thank you for the five dollars. Says congrats on the hundred episodes. Thanks, Each man. of you guys have come on, come a long way since episode one. I am looking forward to seeing more from each of you. Thank you. Well, thank you, man. And we're definitely looking forward to bringing forth uh, mm-hmm. a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. And and going back to talking about when Newman went to Haas back in 2009 what people forget is that in 2008 when they're like oh Stewart's going to to do his own team and he's going to be with Haas and then Newman people forget that at the time that was a really risky move and people were not on yeah, board I don't like like it's not there was really, no history well it. I mean like there's like like now it's not a big deal like let's say if if Keselowski said I'm gonna start my very own cup team like it's a big deal, but then again, it's not as big a deal it was as as it was a decade but ago. You it know it I mean? was a mystery, especially with the fact that Newman, while he won the Daytona 500 in 2008, was definitely not performing at his highest level. And Tony Stewart at that time when they announced it was winless in 2008. And yeah. I think everyone remembers his only win of 2008. Um, but and, it, and that, it's came, just, it's, that came long after the announcement, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just crazy, though, about like how much how far and how different a lot of the the treatment for Newman has been now with fans. And I mean, I think rightfully so. I think a lot of us, you know, you get caught up on the mundane things, but I got to say it is good to see him back. Having one of those, one of the few guys left that was around when I started watching uh, come back. So I, I'm pretty happy about it. And then uh, thank you, Jake, for the 199. It says 100 episodes of being aware of your surroundings. surroundings. That's a oh, I hope. Oh, I hope Slap and MDK are watching. Dude, um, hopefully we'll be together soon and we can say that to each other in person again. Hopefully. Uh, but there's another story that also Bob Parker has talked about. Another return. Matt Kenseth, oh. in a shocking move by Chip Ganassi Racing, what? will be driving what? the number 42 and... He has a playoff wa- waiver. So uh, our buddy Eric Eastep's favorite driver is back. Danny, what what were your thoughts when you saw this? Because I don't mind. We're complete and utter shock. I was not expecting this. I was on I, – I was leaning more towards Jamie McMurray. I was one of the ones who didn't expect Chastain to take this because I knew that he was – you know, he was, he's committed to the Xfinity Series. He needs to stay in there right now. But I was thinking – I was thinking that Jamie McMurray made more sense but I was pleasantly surprised to see Matt Kenseth, and I will I'll take that. And yeah, I, I know I know a few guys who are uh, Kenseth fans, aside from Eric and one one of my buddies, Stephen. And I Snapchatted him, and I was like, "Who would have ever guessed you'd be buying forty two gear in 2020? <laughs> you, you know, and oh, go ahead. Really quick, uh, thank you, Judson, for the two dollar super chat. It says, "Hey guys, Thanks, how's it going? Save a, save a slice of the cake for me." Of course, <laughs> of course, dude. No, Judson, so, Judson, Judson is the future of NASCAR YouTube. Right he there. is. No, he is. He's only, him and his little brother, man, they're both cool, dude. So, yeah, keep keep up the good work, Justin. But, um, uh, but you know, going back to Kenseth, um, you know, this was really surprising. I figured that I assumed that Chastain was going to be involved in some sort of capacity. Like I thought, at least you know, on a part time basis. Since, like Danny pointed out, he's still running in the Xfinity Series. For the championship you know on that level but no he just goes with kenseth and honestly like now like at the time it was very surprising but then when i thought about it when i was when i was able to wrap my brain around it i, I actually like this move and it might not be as surprising as you think and here's why because when you look back at 2018 he did the exact same thing before you know mm-hmm. we came back in 2018 and if you ask me pretty much that single move is the reason Roush is where they're at today, too. Because think about it. They were down in the dumps. People were just like, oh, my God, they're just terrible. Trevor Bain and Stenhouse just weren't they, – they, they couldn't get it figured out. And then eventually, Kenseth comes out of nowhere and just saves the team. And they even offered, offered him the six ride. Like, hey, please come stay. Thank you so much you know, for helping us get this steered in the right course, in the right direction. But, you know, he declined, wanted to be with his family. But then he came back. So, like – I'm just a little confused because then I'm like, wait, so if you're coming back now, like, why didn't you just stay in the six? Like, I don't get, but, but hey, you know, it's all good. But anyways, um, you know, 
just wanted to take some time off and then you know now the opportunities you know it's the right time for him to come back again i mean he's 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 this generation's mark martin in the sport mark martin did the exact same shit or, or excuse me he did the exact same stuff so he cut be aware of, of your surroundings be aware man of your surroundings that's right we're on the 100th episode <laughs> don't cuss anyways uh he did the exact same stuff um you know way back in the day um Remember 2007? He was leading the points, and then he he up and decided, no, nah, I don't want to race no more. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, come on, man. Like, I mean, but <laughs> oh my that, god, oh my goodness, no, read that. Thank you. Go ahead and read. Uh, that. Thank you to generous. the gun for the twenty dollars super chat. Happy 100th episode. Looking forward uh, to the one. I'm I think I'm assuming it means 100 more, but looking forward to the 100. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> As we just hit at the 15 minute mark, 300 people watching. Be sure to lick that like button, guys. Yeah, it's that's gonna, right. Like the like this, button, this show is already going to be legendary. So you guys have to help us out with that it's not anything uh unless you guys help us out with it mm-hmm. it can't be legendary without you exactly so, yeah. sorry i'm just i'm excited man i'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Too, man i like i love you guys man. But, it, 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 it this to think about it we have took a hundred wednesdays out of our life to do yeah. this I mean, is it, didn't we one time do this on like a tuesday remember we did it a few tuesdays and thursdays yeah um, and then uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later with the um, with the schedule changes. But uh, we don't know what, what the deal is with that yet. What time the race is on Wednesdays? If it yeah, it could be, be we'll it start, could but... it could be a pre race show. It could or be. a post race show. Or a post race show. You never know. Or, or or it could be a race watch party. I don't know. Yeah. So you never all know. of the above. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> we'll, go, to... we'll go back to our four hour live stream we used to have right. back in the season one days. Yeah, so, <laughs> dude, remember cahoots? The cahoots we always used to do, dude. Oh all gosh. Remember, we, was, you were at Chicagoland that summer, and we did it. Cool. I played, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was in Chicagoland one uh, one summer, and I played Kahoot on IDK's stream on the top of a, mm. of a uh, of our camper. Yeah, after and the we truck, were in there. We were after in the there. truck race. We were in there, and we were like, hey, let's do this. And then Why all the freaking the, bots would so always come in. There's, there's a muted TV behind me. Sorry, I just I had to no, say no, this because people enjoyed the chat. There's a muted TV behind me, and I'm looking, and the freaking Tiger King is on the, on the commercial <laughs> the TV. Wait, wait have, you, have, you, have you watched it yet? Hell no. He hasn't watched Tiger King. You I need watch to. Crazy? <laughs> He's crazy. He just doesn't watch it yet. I'll tell you what. If we hit, if we break the all-time uh, record, I will watch Tiger King. So if we get above 524 viewers, I'll watch Tiger King. So share with oh, everybody. Hey, okay. uh, well, thank I, you, I, Luke I, Swan, for the 199. I, says, why do I feel like Steve Phelps will come on? Uh, not tonight, <laughs> but we uh, we are working with him. We have a plan for uh, – actually, he will be on. We're, we apologize for him not being on. It's just hey. – Bringing back the sport is kind of takes precedence over us Being three at this podcast, moment, and we're yeah. completely we, we, fine with that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be honest. We weren't surprised to get the, the email we did because I was kind of thinking all day. I was like, you know what? He's got a lot more things going on Probably, right now. Probably, yeah. It's just a, it's just a bad timing. You know, last time was bad timing. This time, it's extremely bad timing. But we'll get him on eventually. But really appreciate thank- you guys being very understanding about this. Yeah, and then and oh, thank you again to uh, thank you to Elijah Leonard for the five dollars saying congrats on a hundred episode, guys. Hey, Here's to a hundred more. Right. Yeah, let's do it. But man, I I don't know if anyone can tell that I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm pumped, man. <laughs> but back to Matt Kenseth though. Matt Kenseth, um, you know, I think he's gonna step in with the playoff waiver. I mean, I I was tossing and turning about this, but I don't I don't know. I mean, I could see. I don't make, think he should. I mean, if look, I'm gonna I, be real with you. Well, well, no, no, no. I, I wasn't I wasn't talking cares? about that. I was just talking about like um um like his chances of making the playoffs first. But if we're gonna talk about that, then yeah, like we'll I'm talk still, about I'm very iffy on the whole playoff thing. Like, I, what's the point I think of having like I, these rules if you never use them in these situations? I, you know, I think that. It is the right call in this case because, I mean, dude, look at this. He's going to be the driver for 32 of 36 races this year. Well, yeah. That's the majority of the entire season. I think at that point, you should be eligible. Well, absolutely. But, but at the same time, it's like, okay, we've been doing this for so many years. Shouldn't we just get rid of the whole of the rule as a whole at this point? It's just like, okay. I, I do think if, if this is going to be the precedence, we should – Look at revising it. Uh, and really quick before I get back to the kinds of stuff, uh, thank you to C. Costain for the uh, for the ten dollars. Thank happy one hundredth stream, you guys. Mm. Uh, you have came a long way as always. Keep it going. We will do. Yeah, uh, hope to see you all over the track soon when this gets all over. Uh, ready to go back to work. Yep, and we are too. And, and going back to Kenza, um, I I there's a few things I think to unpack here. So 
people are immediately looking at Kenseth and be like championship contender. And I think maybe towards the end of the year, if if he's in the play, if he's in the playoffs, look out because somebody as talented yeah, as him with yeah, that good of a car with I, Kurt I, Busch at this point helping out as a teammate, but he's never driven this package before, I, I believe. I think uh, he can get a I think he can get a win, honestly. Honestly, I think with this package, win. honestly with this package, I mean, think about it. Like when you look at the drivers who have really succeeded in this package, who are they? Like the much older drivers from the Gen Four era. So he hasn't ran this package yet, you know. He'll get accustomed to this, and who knows? Maybe he might. You Here, know, here's set the world on fire. You never know. Here's here's a track that I've got on my radar, and it would be, uh, it would be a track that I could definitely see happening. Last track he really ran really good on, and this team he's with has years of research and notes from this track and years of success here, Indianapolis. Yeah. Why couldn't why couldn't Matt Kenseth win at Indianapolis? Well, remember it with Roush. Remember he won the freaking stage, the second stage in 2018. He he, he got a he got like what sixth in that one. Yeah, I think and, yeah he was up and then, top ten. And then yeah. Ganassi, both in IndyCar and NASCAR, has had many years of great runs there. So I mean that could be a race where hey makes the playoffs because of the waiver. But uh, yeah, yeah, I would agree. And, if you are gonna run the the majority of the season, then yeah, you should definitely get a waiver for sure. And, and real quick, I've case. seen some people uh, asking the Haley will be on in the second half, uh, so yeah. we'll let you know. And whoa, thank you, thank whoa. you, Corvette Racing forty eight for the thirty dollars uh, super chat. And that's someone we've seen a lot over the last. Yes, few yeah, dude, he's I, been a big supporter. So thank you, man, for for was, all the support. Dude, he was actually my first follower on Twitter. Believe it or not, like before any of you guys. Before. Like, <laughs> before us, yeah. yeah um, it was crazy. He says, "Happy one hundred. Hope you all have a great night. Can't wait." For NASCAR to return, we're right there with you, man. Yeah, dude. Seriously, yeah, we can't wait. But I saw, I saw some for you mad at Indy since one left. Well, not necessarily. They've just always been good. Like, like keep this in mind. It was never Juan who won there. It was Jamie McMurray who won there. So well, one and, almost uh, won there. And thank you to Keenan Costain for the two dollars. Uh, congratulations on the hundred episodes. As for mm-hmm. uh, and thank you again. And as as for Kenseth, I I think that. The, the waiver deal is tough for me because I don't think at this moment, you can change the rule, I think, and I think that'd be okay. But at this moment, with the rule being that you had to to pledge to the whole season, I, if you got to try and stick to some of the rules. It, it's you so it, – because, I mean, think about if this happens, if somebody who was completely retired afterwards, if he does go in and win the championship this year – the, I mean, you thought the stuff with Kyle Busch was bad. Like, if somebody looks at this and they're like, wait, he didn't even start the season and he wouldn't have yeah, even been racing. Look, at this like, point, look, I had a problem with giving out waivers, like, you know, free candy. But, like, at this point, NASCAR has done it so many times. Just get get rid of the freaking rule at this point and just, like, let whoever just compete for the championship. Like, obviously keep the series rules where it's, like, cup drivers can't compete for the Xfinity oh. title. But, like, in this case, just get and, rid of it. I see that in the chat. Uh, Robert Vandermeer says, uh, "I wish Carl went to the 42." Oh, he dude, was the dude, first that's an, oh no, dude, that's another thing too. Like, I can't get out of my head that Edwards had he Edwards literally spent a a day or two to contemplating whether he wanted to return, and he freaking declined it. I was like, dude, no, Edwards, you could have came back, and you probably could have won on the spot. If Edwards went to the 42, that's immediately my race win pick for Darlington for the first race back. Because he's just that talented, I might be a little bit over exaggerating on that on that on, on that case. But dude, just the fact that he that Carl Edwards could have came back, we almost had him back. Oh, that's, that, that's and, crazy. So you close. know, it, it sounds like what I watched today too. Edwards wasn't the only one they were considering reaching out to, and what uh, was said on the Dell Junior download, it kind of sounded like Dell Junior suggested he might have even had a chance to do it too. <laughs> now that would have been uh. insane. I would have bought all been, the 42 gear in dude, the world. Now that would have been insane. Because he, been insane. he mean, was talking about how he he actually had the conversation with Amy that he kind of still had the dream. Like, like, like he, he, he wants to, but he, he knows with his uh, conditions in the past, I he mean, shouldn't. I mean, now that he brought that up, I mean, just, just, just think about it. All right, let's say, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like gets, you know, his daily checkups, that sort of thing. Then the doctors are like, hey, okay, you can race. Then he would probably race, right? Maybe? I don't know. I would here, hope. Here, here, I hope. Here's, a, here's the thing. With his history of conditions, if that had been him doing that at Daytona instead of Newman, that probably wouldn't have ended as good. No, yeah, that good probably point. would have not ended as good at all. But uh, Thank you really quick, yeah. Demetrius Wilson, for the $5 Super Chat. Happy 100, guys. Mm-hmm. Hope this keeps going for 100 more. We're hoping. We're hoping 100 more and then some. And, then, oh, we got a bunch. NRF, 
uh, 18 says McLeod to the 42 2021 guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the two dollars, man. And then uh, 499 from Jacobs 4858. He says, Congrats on 100 episodes. You guys do a great job bringing the NASCAR community together. Keep up the great work. We will do our best to thank you. Appreciate uh, definitely. it. Definitely. By the way, 320 people watching, only 186 likes. Make sure to lick the like button. Like button. By the yep. way. So. Oh, and and again, uh, just uh, a few people have asked again. Haley will be on the second half uh, after the lightning round. So yeah, you have even more reason to look forward to the lightning exactly, round. Now. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, man, there's there's a lot of stories. I think I kind of want to save the one with the schedule uh, until Haley comes on. I want to yeah. hear her take on yeah. it too. Yeah, we can ask that um, because uh, Arca is involved in that too. Yes, yeah. and so here here's what we can talk about though the pro invitational race at talladega that's right uh it it, and adam stern reported that it had 1.24 million viewers which is up from 971,000 the week before and thank god because it had a really good showing and thank you judson for the two dollars again thanks keelan said hi by the way top five cup teams uh we'll get that in a bit right after this uh, a a current or in history put that in the chat and then we'll get to that later uh but thank you man um so Pro Invitational at Talladega. Darian, go for it. You know, it, you know, I had my uh, my opinions last week, my thoughts too. I think everyone else did on the whole iRacing deal. But um, this week, I, they they took the W, man. I got to give it to them. The race was uh, it was spectacular. I it wasn't a shit show like you know the other races, but Richmond and Talladega. I mean, they're on a roll finally now with this, and it's good to see them. You know, make this tremendous progress. Um, it kind of sucks Correct. that it kind of sucks for some of the people involved who have really been pushing the you know i racing to get this platform for years it sucks that now that nascar is coming back you're basically going to get pushed back down you know the the totem pole when it comes to relevancy within the sport you know that sort of thing um they'll, they'll still be relevant obviously but like not you know to this degree the, the floor will be higher up now yeah the floor is relevancy. higher up too you know what i mean like so that's a good thing so i mean at the end of the day you got exposure for this thing i'm quite sure a lot of people i mean like pretty much damn near maybe the whole country knows about it now just because of its appearances on sports center and like you know news in general and even trending on social media with no sports on so i'd say this whole pro invitational thing while it could have been better it was a major success and this race was proof of that um gordon goddamn <laughs> and then uh clint boyer oh my goodness dude i gotta make a bus video for the pro invitational bu- bus video <laughs> dude <laughs> because dude he was running second and then he blew up and even gordon was like uh you know no he was leading close. oh he was oh he was okay. behind bowman who was just, uh, just oh under a lap down. so yeah but so he, he was second in the pack was, yeah that's but right. he was leading the race and he, i remember uh, junior's uh, uh, audio of it was funny because he was streaming on twitch and he's like oh boyer's leading how about that and that 30 seconds later oh he's blowing up <laughs> no, but what's funny about that too is uh, Bowman actually ended up winning too. So like Bowman, yeah. <laughs> like Bowman blew his engine up kind of, and then ended up. It's all a race. conspiracy. Yeah, so <laughs> that's funny. But then Junior was in the race too. That was cool. I mean, it's cool to see like the current drivers and the former legends. Well, you know, what I mean, kind of and, mix it and up. Jacob's forty eight fifty eight in the chat says that Jeff Gordon got stuck in the catch fence. That's right. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah, he did. So yeah, so like he got beers thrown over the catch fence at him to getting caught in the catch fence. <laughs> It's funny during the race, uh, my wife Claudia she made a comment. She was like, uh, "Seems like this has gone by pretty quick." I was like, "Well, it takes a lot less time to clean up a virtual big one." So yeah, and it's only seventy <laughs> laps too. Like I, I found that online, and this is crazy because you know in real life how you know the crazy tracks are obviously the super speedways because of the inevitable wrecks, the big ones, the flips, you know, and also the majority of the fatalities in NASCAR's history. I understand that, but then it's the exact opposite online. Everyone seems to have common sense, or damn near most people seem to have common sense racing when they're racing at super speedways. When they're racing at like, you know, mile and a half and, you know, short tracks and like heat on NASCAR heat or like I racing, it usually turns to shit really fast. So <laughs> basically, you know, it, it's kind of weird how it's like different, how it's like, you know, and it's, it's opposite in those regards when it comes to online racing. So. Like, I kind of expected, okay, these are professionals, it's Talladega, it's probably, they're probably going to use their heads. But then, in the beginning of the broadcast, they were talking about no yellow line rule. And I was like, what? Like, oh no, I don't know if that's going to work <laughs> out. But then, once again, these are professionals. They didn't go they, below they, it they, they never really did it. They never really did it. Yeah, I mean, so, Keselowski no. did it, and then um, 
he I think he spun Johnson too because he got back on the track and then he just got into him. But I, no, I yeah, that, Johnson didn't it. know he was there. Oh, okay, I think Johnson, so Johnson went came down. down. Into okay, Johnson. Him. It was just a racing deal. Yeah, so that's um, that was really the only incident. In, and they really showed what we could not on Heat Four yeah. whenever we have that option. Restraint. See, I wanted to do <laughs> I wanted to do no yellow line rule for the filter time bash, which is this Friday on this channel, by the way. Um, but yeah, we can't do that just because. It's, we don't have restraint. Yeah, like, like <laughs> you guys duck down every every lap. You know what oh, I mean? I'm gonna like, dive all the way down to the inside wall on the back stretch. The we best just trick hope that on Heat it. Four, the best trick on Heat Four always is to always try entering Turn Three to go below the line, and then you basically like get underneath them, and then they bump up. And then because oh, of the my whole brother, momentum thing, then my they brother sent back. me a text. He said that uh, if we if we do get above five twenty four today, that uh, that I have to watch Tiger King with him. Yes, so. please, let's do it. Yes, we're at three thirty. Sure. We're at three thirty right now. Three thirty one. You need to watch it no matter what. It would be a great BS you stream, do. and I would definitely join you. So, <laughs> yeah, you do need to watch it. Jarrett watches Tiger King. It's not even a big deal. Everyone's watched it. Just watch it. I know. Yeah, you're, it's like, you're like you're like the only person in America. Yeah, that. you're like the only person on Earth who hasn't watched it yet. But there, there's white trash in the town I'm around. It's just they don't have you know. But these white tigers. trash people have tigers, <laughs> dude. These white trash people have tigers. How many white trash people have tigers? Probably not many. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but probably more than we're feeling <laughs> comfortable with. If we're gonna be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's like no. That documentary revealed too many people. Uh, white trash people have uh, the tigers. <laughs> well, and and, and while them. while we're paused for a minute, uh, three forty one watching. We keep 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 climbing. Uh, so be sure to lick that like button, y'all. Right. Let's get that. Let's make that like button be violated. Um. Oh yeah, and then uh, no, my whole family's watching me right now. So. <laughs> and you just said that. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three forty two. The P. Anyway, uh, Danny, right Danny, what's what's your thoughts on the provocational race? So we can get the attention away from me. <laughs> uh pro invitation race was uh good uh i obviously loved the winner so yeah. there you go oh my god I, won. Ah. it's funny it's funny <laughs> we, we all picked junior but i kind of i still come out happy because my new guy won yeah mm -hmm. and, and the and scheme looks great the, on iRacing by the way the new scheme i like it does. the black scheme I, Honestly, I think it's gonna look good on the extra. That's the one we haven't seen that scheme run in person yet. So honestly, that scheme reminded me of a of some like retro Richard Childress scheme. I'm not sure what exactly, I, but it just screams like it would be an RCR I, scheme. I, I just hate the fact that like I actually pre-ordered that diecast and it didn't even make the minimum, so I can't even get that one. Oh, so, I didn't. Damn. So always so, get the refund. What is the minimum for that stuff? I don't know. Uh, I went ahead and since I, I couldn't get the traditional like the Noco Chevy Goods car, I maybe got, you uh, know what? You know what? I just thought about this. Maybe it's different for each driver. For Kyle Busch, maybe the initial pre-order, like you know, minimum would be like two thousand, which is understandable. But for someone like Angela Ruck, it would be one. Oh, someone just said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> minimum to produce it is oh five. So oh, okay, okay, damn. So. So there's not there wasn't enough uh, people who liked it enough to it's get only, 500. Only so. 500 and five like that's not even like a lot in the grand scheme of things really when you think about it. Mm -hmm. But I went ahead and ordered the, uh, the auto club win, so at least I got that. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. good. That's good. Has, it's, uh, it's still okay. funny to think that like while all that's been waiting, three three guys who can just sit back and just just relax and you know just know they're already playoffs is Bono, Hamlin and Bowman. They're just like we're good. Oh, that's right. Oh, he's yeah. He's Dan roboting out. Danny's roboting, guys. He's roboting. Couldn't be a podcast if one of us wasn't roboting. Yeah. Uh, but I, I guess I'll go ahead with uh, a little my thoughts. Um, I thought the race was actually a lot better than a lot of them have been. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot more entertaining. I got to say, uh, I have ripped on Fox a ton, and rightfully so. Yeah. But that it. broadcast was fun. Mm. That was just fun to be around, like, and watching and seeing, like. Gordon and Boyer going back and forth. If you told me in 2012 that Gordon and Boyer were going to be sitting there messing with each other and laughing through the entire race on a virtual race, I would have been like, yeah, right. That's like, yeah, they're awesome. friendly now. They're friends. They're, um, they're like BFFs now, man. That's crazy. But it was really fun. It was a really fun race. To, uh, the racing for the most part was good. There weren't too many screw ups. I mean, it, honestly, it's something that we've all learned the hard way. It looked like it was mostly net code issues, if anything. It just yeah. looked like, you know, oh, somebody looked like they were you're, you're not on my screen. You were clear well, on mine. I mean, wasn't Richmond, on mine. I mean, Richmond was great. And then this was great as well, too. It's it's, it's crazy. Oh, oh God. 
we got tagged uh, in something on Twitter, and, and it's from the one and only Keplinger. Let's oh, see. oh, it's an Adam Stern tweet. NASCAR is planning to release the first chunk of the revised 2020 schedule tomorrow, hey. with the first race still being slated for Darlington. Meanwhile, as teams prepare for the new safety protocols, many are in the process of purchasing PPE, including hundreds of but, masks. But look at the scheme, so. though. Look at the scheme. What's the scheme? What is John. that, Darian? What is it? It's the good old John Deary scheme, man. What a coincidence, <laughs> dude. That is funny, dude. If you want to share screen that, go ahead. But oh my goodness. I'm, a, I'm on my phone. Oh, with that, yeah, you're right? on your phone. Never mind. But yeah. anyways, no. That I'll make sure the stream health is good as we yes. hit 350 on uh, my studio. It oh, says we're at here, 350? So. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah. By the yeah. way, guys, I'm running it, by the way, because there were some problems with the OBS. So this o OBS is decided that I was not going to run this tonight so because basically, I just... So basically, you guys now have insight in how much we trust each other. I I have his 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 freaking stream key right now. I could take his. I could end his channel if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that because I mean he, he, he's him. had my he's had mine before too. He can do literally anything. So yeah, pretty much we can exchange <laughs> stream keys, man. That's how much trust we have, man. Um, over time, pro invitational. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the the broadcast Fox. I hope Fox keeps. Fox has found the right balance that we were talking about that we didn't know. Again, and I think this is just, just them getting their footing at first uh, about we were like, they need to find something between too serious and, and too just joke, much of a joke. I think they found that balance right now. Uh, I think they found, found the balance more than the drivers have. Cause I mean, you see some of the driver audio I've seen the past couple of days from it. And it's like, Ooh man, uh, you 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 thought we yeah. were bad when it was online racing. Uh -huh. No man, these guys are like, these guys might actually be worse than us. When it when it comes um, to when it comes to audio, right? Whew, when it, I think when it comes to um, when it comes to how mad everybody gets. Oh um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and fun, fun, I think funniest part of the whole thing. There's always like that one funny part. Like last week, it was Bubba doing the the Polish victory lap. Yeah. This. Uh, this one, I think the funniest um, – oh, God, is my train of thought just went off. No, uh, no. The funniest – I think the funniest oh. part was Denny Hamlin and his daughter had the remote. Oh, and yeah, his monitor that's off. right. The monitor turned off. That, that was funny. He's like, my screen went black. And then his daughter I, I, was like – I, I, I just don't know how does how does, how does that happen. Like, what was she doing? I, like? don't, I don't know, man. But that's that's what happens when, you know, you – Well, she has a vlog. And yeah. I think what it was was just holding it and just, you know, uh, she's – pretty young so she probably just was getting excited didn't see where her fingers Bro, were no, if that, that happens to me the kids are banned from the entire like man cave or wherever the hell the rig is it's like dude if i'm in the middle of an i race and you turn my so, freaking rig off it's like no you're never so we've had again. <laughs> two times where the dog has messed it up we got one time with the kid so yeah, who's, so who's gonna be the one up. who's but, gonna but be like, the one with the kid well, that's gonna screw it up next for, right for what i don't get is like you know you just turned off turn it back on turn it back on yeah, come on exactly well exactly. i can understand kids get flustered and stuff yeah. and she, brought, she looked terrified yeah. <laughs> i it probably wasn't a big deal to him though in the end but well, no, uh, not in the end but at the time i was like what, what, my I'll, screen went black what <laughs> i'll ask you guys i've seen some guys in the chat a lot of them putting nines and tens uh what's your ranking of the race uh and chat letter rips what what's your uh I'll what's give your it a nine i'll give it a nine I, I, I'll, I'll give them their props this week i mean really the the start was kind of rough but now we're kind of getting getting into the stage where it's like, okay, it's here. We're used to this thing. Um, I don't feel like it's being as oversaturated as it was anymore. Now they're starting to kind of tone back on it. Like, okay, like, okay, it's not like a – because when they were first starting the marketing efforts, like, it almost felt like I was obligated to watch it. It's like – it's like it's like if you don't watch it then you think i racing's bad type thing i'm like like no i just i just don't want to watch it you know over and over and over that sort of thing but i'm starting to get more into it man so i give it a nine saw the, i saw in the chat one of my my favorite quote from a roots video what? we are all oh michael, michael Waltrip. Waltrip. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, anyway danny what would you write the race man um 10 out of 10 perfect winner so oh five points <laughs> ranks it rates it 11 out of 10 in the chat oh yeah five points Big supporter of the podcast and really the community too. So it's kind of yeah, crazy. You, it's kind of crazy the YouTuber I've been watching like my childhood. I were, were I'd say like in high school and stuff like that. Like I mean, I've been watching his channel for so long. I don't know. It's been so long now, and he's in the chat. It's still crazy. It's funny saying like all these other channels in there, and then he's got that that gray highlighted thing with a check mark. And yeah, I want that. I want that really <laughs> bad. So hopefully someday we'll see. One day, yeah. um, I would give it probably a nine. Uh, I think that. Maybe 
we could be a little better, but that I think so far Richmond was the most realistic, but let's be honest, the last couple of years, Richmond has left a lot to be desired. Dude, Richmond um, in real life is just bad. Like that was way better than freaking real life Richmond. But I think that has mostly was, to do with the package similar. anyways. Like, it was similar, but I would say that I'd say nine out of ten, I think that you they probably could one up it, but it it's definitely in the running for best of the year so mm-hmm. far. I'd I'd say between this and maybe Texas and and not Bristol, definitely not Bristol. Um, mm. But pro- you know, and, and probably Richmond, I would say, was p- pretty good. So yeah. it, it's up there. That's that's the important thing. They're they're improving, and I think these guys are getting a lot more comfortable in these cars. I, I've noticed Harvick seems to be a bit more comfortable. I, I think that um, I, I think that Kurt Busch is one that I've seen get mm-hmm. more comfortable. Uh, Bobby Labani has jimmy johnson is incredibly improved even if he did have that blunder that nobody saw at the end yeah, of the race um yeah. and i saw in the chat somebody asked where joseph finished in the filter time bash uh the, the bash is on friday guys yeah it's on friday uh, guys no. oh, wait where did he so. finish in the last one where he, he didn't race the last one yeah, yeah no. i did wait joseph lombard yeah i did did he yeah no joseph I don't th- if you're I don't listening think I don't i'm think sorry did. that darian forgot about you no i don't think he did i think he backed out yeah he did Oh. No, he raced. No. I, don't know. I was on the broadcast. Yeah, I, I saw the whole field. It, 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 it was me who unfortunately had the back. Oh, out, so. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. There was a bunch of people. And oh, as you yeah, see in the right. uh, chat, five points is sponsoring again. Yeah. Um, but really quick, I guess I could – I wonder if I could share screen if it will come up. I'm going to I'm gonna get the poll ready. Yep, that's – dude, we uh, haven't seen the poll. I almost forgot. I'm just hoping that my internet – is nice enough to me that we keep going. It's it's pretty good so far. And it hasn't been a problem. And hopefully they see it too. Yeah, if not, we'll, I'll just read it. Uh, do, 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 community. There we go. There we go. A good show. A better tab. All right, come on. Come on, internet. Work with him here. Let's uh, let him share. All right, I'm just, oh, I'm just opening it up and, and getting all the comments opened up right now. All right. Um, so I think it'll work this time. So many people I s- I've seen are wishing happy birthday and putting happy birthday in it. It's like, well, mm-hmm. not well. actually, two days ago was the five-year anniversary of me starting up this channel. I started it up as literally my BS channel. Yeah. And since since then, it's uh, – it's in, it's improved slightly. It's taken off. It's taken off, man, ever since. And I remember watching one of your videos in 2017. I was in IKEA, and I was watching your playoff video. What if NASCAR didn't have playoffs? And I was like, "Well, this guy." Knows oh my what he's god! About. You never but, told me that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it was a long time ago too. And like, I remember that. I was like, you know, I I just remember oh, it just now. Right. So that's crazy. Can we see it on the yes, stream? Yes, we can I'm looking see at the stream. It. We can see it. All right. Yes. Cool. I'll adjust it a little bit, but yeah, all we can right. See it. Go ahead. So, what did you think of the Pro Invitational race at Talladega? 3.8 thousand votes, so it's up from the last couple of weeks. Uh, you had 65% of you thought it was great. 24 thought it was good. 8% of you thought it was average. One said below average, and 2% of you, I, I don't know what to do, but you said it was bad. Um, but it's you're always that two percent. It's always that two percent all the time. You're entitled to your wrong opinion. No, I'm yeah. kidding. You're yeah. entitled to your opinion. Uh, we respect that. And 3.8 um, thousand on the uh, yes. the vote. And so we got an 89% net approval and we got a 3% net negative with 8% of you being like how I normally am, a yeah. milk toast fence sitter. <laughs> uh, so with some of the comments here, we got Fish Productions at the number one comment. Whenever they cut to Boyer and Gordon, you knew you were going to laugh at some point while they were talking. Yeah, True. Yeah. All the time. Daniel put, uh, if only Denny's daughter did that during the Bristol Night Race. Yeah, hey, dude, that would have been perfect. Yeah. To be fair, really Denny was really, was yeah, a really but good. Yeah, he, he was really it. good. I mean, Denny had so. he had a really good car though, so can't give him. Uh, let's see. Uh, Carnation's in there. Steve's in there. I'm gonna go a little further down. I like to try and give everybody a little bit of yeah, love through here. Yeah, some love. Really um, I am a fanatic. Nice. That's one of my favorite Green Day songs. When I come around, the entire uh, lyrics for When I Come Around. And then down there to the legend, the um, eleven. Uh, Happy uh, birthday uh, to you, cha cha cha. We already had, we already had the cake. Yeah, that's right. We already <laughs> had the cake. We blew, we blew out the candle. Hey, can we get an F in the chat for those who voted it that it was below average and bad? Yeah, I don't. I <laughs> Go don't ahead, know. chat. Do I what you want. The... <laughs> what's the, what's the reply to it? Or is it just F? Uh, it's probably it's probably, just an F. it's probably just F. Oh, go figure, go figure, go figure, go figure. <laughs> oh, love this poll. Um, let's see. 
if I was visually impaired, this is the second one I'm reading from Daniel. If I was visually impaired, I would think that this was a real race. 10 out of 10. I loved every moment. Clint Boyer is now my top three favorite drivers. He's won me over even more. Congrats, Daniel. Nobody ever gets read twice on these, on the, on the uh, Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I, I hearted this one. Uh, Ultimate Dragon left my Pokemon oh, no. team. Oh, I don't Lord. know what these mean, but I really appreciate the thought. Um, oh, she called me a Pokemon name in her video. I don't even know what it is, but that's what I mean. All right, it's funny, though. But <laughs> I, I see that uh, Ice, uh, just by the name, Icy Rock sounds good. Big Root. Um, I'll take that as a compliment. I don't um, even know these stats. Can someone explain Pokemon to me? Are these oh, wait, like... no, these are the names. These, okay. these are names. These are the types, I think. Okay, um, then what's at the bottom? Are those like the powers or something? I think I think so. Um, I appreciate I appreciate the thought, Dragon. That's yeah, really awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. it. It's original. It really is original, though. Mm -hmm. like uh, your team is all ice-type Pokemon uh, since you're the iceberg. On that note, you really, <laughs> you, you'll really love Avalug. Uh, it's literally an iceberg table. <laughs> oh, wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I just realized something. She gave me the worst team. Come on, Dragon. <laughs> she gave you way better Pokemon than me. Damn right. <laughs> um, Y'all remember when Darian freaked out about Greg Galvin going to the 41 car? <laughs> Bro, that was 2018. Oh Bro, that was oh Caleb. Remember Caleb War, got me that. War time. Machine. War Machine put the Bill of Rights. Oh, the Bill of Rights. That's right. Jeez. Uh, there's Judson says it's International Dance Day since it's the hundredth episode, and you guys need to have a dance segment. Hell no! All <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, um, no. All right, just do the chop chop chop. There you go. That's it. That's all you dance. Yeah. Um, I love democracy. I love the republic. Thank you, Mr. Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darren, you don't get that. Stop laughing. It's the um, from Star Wars. I get that. Oh, someone found it. What is strange that? animal remix that's a song i use at the end of my videos oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep and they oh and i think they found they might have found the crowder remix too that i use so that's pretty Yo, cool oh you're a beast man you're a beast for finding that appreciate what it. else we got Ooh, uh that happened Whoa. that happened i i remember seeing that earlier and i needed to go back to it uh <laughs> let's go back let's go down to the last one is okay. dog dan okay the person who just posted your song if they're a real fan next time they'll do this ain't the end of me yeah. Okay. Um, the race was awesome. All around looked like a real Talladega race. Pack racing, bump drafting, and strategies all around. Glad that Alex got the win. I am starting to become a fan of Bowman, and congrats to LaJoya for that close That's finish. That's right. He finished and then he game. puts the lyrics to All All Matter, my high school song. <laughs> nice. Oh, wow. So he not only broke – D-Dog Dan, you just broke two barriers. One, you got – well, you got the last comment. But the last comment was both serious, and you had us actually talking about the race for the last one, and, and it wasn't the, just first the, or that's last. That's the first time I've seen somebody's high school song on there. I don't even know my high school but song. It was both serious and a joke. Good yeah, job, Yeah, I like it. I like it. That serves a heart. Um, but, yes, that was the poll. Thank you, guys. Uh, and as I saw at one point, we uh, – Okay, we stopped. We stopped sharing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stream's yeah. behind on my oh, end. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Go <laughs> ahead. Keep going. Also, I, I just want to give a shout out. We obviously can't watch the races live because we're we, we got our own show. Yeah. But I just saw in our chat our good buddy Sloppy Joe finished second tonight in the pro league <laughs> in a, in a in a very close finish. It sounds like. Oh, he finished second job, again. Sloppy. Damn it! God damn it! He's so and close. I, so it, oh, it'll I, come. We're a little under it now, but I saw that we had actually jumped up to 385 at one point. Man, yeah. if we can get, if we, I'm telling you, if we can get when Haley comes on the second half of the if show, we if we can get, get to there, 524, bro. If we get to 524 I, when Haley well, comes, well, on, no, I have to. We have to break it, so I have to get to 520. Wait, wait I said if we get more than the, the top one, which is 524. So if we break 524, if we get to 525, then um, I'll, my, my brother will hold me accountable to watch Tiger King. Um, so yes, thank you guys for that. Uh, for all of that, that was that was really fun. Uh, I, I, let me look really quick through because I, I again I, I want to wait till the second half to talk about that one part. But I guess one thing we could talk about here before we get to the lightning round mm -hmm. is that according to Adam Stern, NASCAR teams had again this is probably outdated news at this point. Yeah. Um, but he had said that NASCAR teams had started to bring essential personnel back to their building to build and prep yep. cars. For the and train. in fact, actually today I saw from GoFast Racing's Twitter that they had guys in the shop today working on cars. That's good. Nice. That is good. That they they see. they were they were wearing masks and practicing social distancing, but they're back to work. Dude, I I'm I'm just excited just from you know the potential this whole situation has. It's looking like NASCAR is going to be the first and only sport back. 
right? Isn't it looking? Good? Uh, they're going to be the first one, but um, it won't be the only for long. Well, okay. if you consider them kind of a sport, like wrestling, still been going on. Okay, okay, but like, so. but like, I guess like you know, compared to like football, basketball, like yeah, it'll be the yeah. first. So like, there's a lot of potential with this, and then also think about it too. There's still nothing to do during this time, so you're gonna have some 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 weeks back to back races. You know what I mean? Like trucks mm-hmm. this day, expand, and 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 you know what, like. As a NASCAR fan, that's a freaking dream. I've never thought a schedule would ever be like that in my life. Yeah, and we'll we'll get into that in the second half of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I see the gun put in chat. MLB says they'll be back in June. Uh, so NASCAR, though, will get the jump at least. Uh, and good. I think it's probably going to be easier, especially being within driving distance. You don't have to have people in hotels close to each other, all yeah. that stuff. It's um, um- it's still unsure, you know, whether or not fans will ever get to come back. But I'm kind of on. The, I'm kind of on the. I'm kind of on the side that I think towards the end of the season fans will get to come back, but mm-hmm. I know it, I know it'll be a while. You know, and, that the one perk having the longest season ever. And and you yeah. know, um, well, what exactly are we talking about, by the way? I don't I don't want to talk about the schedule if we're not talking about it enough. So, well, like, about we can we can probably it. we can shift a little bit away from it. Okay, um, okay, okay. I was like, wait. <laughs> Let me see what we got. There's so much stuff on here that like is it connected with it. I want to make sure that we're not like dipping into the yeah, field that yeah. we'll be talking about in the second half of the episode. Um, but really quick, I want to bring this up for for people because uh, a lot of people like to watch old races. Uh, NASCAR's YouTube channel has been on it. I've said this week after week. Yeah. I'm probably a broken record at this point. Uh, but today they put the 2005 Dover race on, mm-hmm. uh, which that's a good race. Uh, really close finish between Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch. Uh, the 28th, so yesterday, I want to say, or the day before, one of the two, they had the 2006 UAW Ford 500. As a junior fan, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, May 1st, Friday, they're putting on the first race after 9-11, the one that Dale Jr. won. And it's very Dale Jr. centric. Mm-hmm. Uh, tomorrow, though, Truex's first win, at uh, which took place at Dover, so that'll be yeah. a fun one. I, 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 I want to I watch that one. And that was also the day uh, – um, and Bill France uh, Jr. passed away as well. Yeah, yeah, the very same day. That win for Truex was that technically was that technically the last true DEI win? Yes, yes, mm-hmm. okay, yes. It was the last DEI win ever. Because because oh, like the, the, years ago. the, yeah. the 2010 McMurray wins was still the Earnhardt Ganassi. It wasn't DEI. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, and what I, what I like too is having these 2007 races not in potato quality anymore. Dude, I know yeah. it's like, it's way different. And, and but still, but still, we greatly appreciate the people who have uploaded these races. But yes. then NASCAR is kind of like taking that approach, like, hey, we'll take it from here. We'll upload these older races. And it's not to say that they're just gonna go uh, go ahead and 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 upload every single race that NASCAR has ever ran. No, it's not gonna be like that. It's just the major ones they want to put out. And it's it's safe to say it's it's boosted their channel. They're almost they're they're fastly approaching almost five hundred thousand subscribers. So, and uh, really quick, the that. last couple ones they put out were all Talladega races. The 27th, they put out the 2003 Aaron's 499. The 24th, the 2009 Aaron's 499, which I thought it was cool because I had a companion video with that of Brad Kozlowski talking about that race and like different mo- uh, important moments of it for him, mm-hmm. uh, which was really cool. Uh, by the way, I apologize for slow mode. It's just so I'm ruining it for that everybody yeah, else. Yeah, we have like, to. We have to. You guys know what We it put is. it on 30 if, instead if, of 60 if, seconds, though. If, so if, if we can't. If we can't see enough to catch the bad ones in the chat, it's just horrible for everybody. So yeah, so that's why. Uh, and then I like this. They put in two really old, really good retro races. The 1970 Alabama 500 was out on the 23rd, and then on the 22nd, Dude. the 1982 Winston so, 500. So, at a boy NASCAR for you, acknowledging their history. Let me tell you something. I respect the history. Obviously, I'm a history NASCAR history channel, just like Jared is right now. Um, but the thing is, though, I've been, I've watched some 70s racing. I'm not a fan of it. Like, people talk about, let's go back to our roots. I'm like, dude, Petty was leading by, like, two laps. Well, what are the you problem talking with about? The, seven, the problem with the 70s wasn't the, the, the racing as much as the attrition rate. That was the biggest problem with the 70s. Because yeah. if you watch a lot of those races, the first half is really good. And then the, the, the leader will pull out just simply because they are able to last the race. I know. I Like, I don't know. Just that era. It's just like you basically already know who's going to win. Like, Petty was going to win. Like, it, it was either going to be Petty or David Pearson in those days from time to time. Especially think- in the early 70s. 
<laughs> and our uh, 18 thank you man two dollars uh, is we're gonna lose no, no, gonna no, be no. on the podcast we one can't. day I, I don't, I don't. If, we can't if we can't. i want I don't, if i, I want my career to commit suicide he will be. Yeah, no 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 dude, we, <laughs> love, we love him we love him i dude. do but yeah but and i've talked we, with him there's bridges no. that are too far no, no he can't yeah no it's some of the stuff that he's done if not for the best no, position. No, no, he's a good guy, and I've talked with him personally. He's a good yeah. guy, and he's a former yeah. Marine, too, served our country, and amazing YouTuber, yeah. and he's close to, to 100,000 subscribers, less than 9,000 away. Funny YouTuber, but no, no, not in this show. So, no. so five points, points, you yeah, five points you can have. Yeah, five points you can have. Long story short, support the guy, but is it best for business? I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, just, yeah, just not in this show. But, but, yeah, but thank you. Well, thank you for the $2. And- and uh, I think with that, we're at about the, the Yo, hour mark, so we can do the, yeah, yeah, let's do the let's do the lightning round, then we can have our special guest come on uh, okay. once we finish okay. that. Be careful, don't break your microphone. All right, I yeah. think I have the Oh, thank you, the other white castle. Yep, yeah, thanks for the 99 cents. And once again, it is time for the annual tradition, the lightning round. On the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, Jarrett, what do we have on tap today? Well, the first thing isn't even NASCAR related. It's World of Outlaws related. Sprint cars and late models from the World of Outlaws will be hosting events at Knoxville and Boone Raceways uh, May 8th and 15th, respectively. There will be no spectators at the events, but I'm assuming, uh, because it was just the announcement I saw, I didn't see any details, uh, but I'm assuming they'll have somewhere to stream it so you'll be able to watch. Yeah. Well, and also, I mean, South Dakota, there are, it was either North Dakota or South Dakota. They were racing. It was like the first, uh, it's probably North Dakota back. just cause it would be something where Kamikaze goes, why are we all having everyone here? Well, no. dude, like that makes sense though. Kamikaze. It's in the middle of nowhere. So it makes sense to have that race <laughs> take place. There, it's the know? most unpopular of the two Dakotas. Dude, <laughs> hey, hey, yo, you and me, we should seriously fly out there and stay with Kamikaze and just explore Dakota, what Dakota has to offer. I don't even know which Dakota he lives in anymore. No. North. North. Okay. So yeah, North Dakota, let's go up to North Dakota and see what it has to offer. Uh, also, I saw this on Reddit, something that I, I don't know if it's for a charity. I know there's a Dale Senior car for charity, but there also is a refurbished 2007 Jeff Gordon raced win car for sale and Ooh. a 2014 National Guard Dale Earnhardt Jr. raced win car. I'm assuming it's probably Martinsville. I don't think they'd sell Ooh. a Daytona 500 yeah, or like that. Yeah, probably. Well, um, it, it, it's, out of, it's out of Martinsville or one of those Poconos. Was National. Wait, hold up. Is it, it's, a, it's a Gen 4 car, right? No, it's a Gen 6. Oh, it's a Gen 6? Okay, it's 2014. Oh, I thought you said 2007 for so, some reason. I don't so know why. I thought 2007 you said Jeff it, Gordon. It, it's, it's, okay. not gonna be, it's not going to be the Daytona 500 because that one sits in the Hendrick like, shop. It's going to be there forever probably. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so it's either, it's either Martinsville or that, that Pocono where he wasn't in that, whatever that one blue sponsor was. I can't remember what that was. Michael Baker or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was Michael Baker. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, Danny. You'll like this from Alex Bowman himself said that uh, on hold is the context of his contract talks at the moment, which uh, we're all assuming will probably be the case. I'm assuming though, if he, if they come back and he's performing at the same level he was before, uh, they, they'll get that. I, I mean, he, he got to win. Him. He got to win. That should automatically yeah. lock him for a new deal. You're in the playoffs. That's it. You can do that. And, there. And, think, yeah. and, and not to mention even, they can probably get Chevy Goods back because they got them a win in iRacing. So. Oh, but you have to mm-hmm. take into account sponsorship. So even though he's winning, it doesn't necessarily guarantee but the ride. I'm, so we'll I'm assuming hopefully, I'm assuming they'll work with him, though. He'll be all right. That's the thing we hope that uh, the Rona doesn't affect too much of sponsorship. Yeah, but we'll find out. We'll see. Um, from Dale Jr. himself, uh, he released his Brant Camaro for the Pro Invitational Race at Dover. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's back in a red eight. So... So yeah, he'll be so so when Xfinity goes to oh wait is it Dover or Darlington? You Dover. Said. Okay, Dover. No, no, okay. it's it's for the Pro Invitational. Oh, yeah. Pro. Oh, dude. For some reason, I was thinking Xfinity. I don't know why, dude. I want real <laughs> racing back, oh, man. I want it back so bad. <laughs> That's cool. Um, oh, uh, this is one for our buddy Eric. The Ice Box Pickup Challenge Race Two at I believe Kansas will be on Eric's channel tomorrow night, eight oh. p.m. Eastern time. And so then, be sure to watch. I watched the first one, and it, the racing was really good. There were a few crashes, obviously, yeah. but the racing, for the most part, they were pretty good. Um, so, yeah, be sure to watch that and one. And then the Filter Time Bash. <laughs> yes, I was about to get to Friday. that. The Friday. second Filter Time Bash this Friday at Talladega, 100% race on Heat 4. We actually put on a really good race last, last time, so uh, but it will be on my channel, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 
on Friday. So be, we, be sure to watch. I'm going to be spamming everybody that stuff. It's we be really did put everywhere. We really did put on a good show. I was able to watch the full race a couple weeks ago and I was like, wow, this is really good. Like even when, yeah. they, even when, when we were single file, it was still entertaining, you know? Yes. And, uh, I want to say, uh, thank you, uh, to, to, everybody for watching uh let's just knock these three things out of the way mm -hmm. 5.4 million unique viewers have watched yeah. at least one of the iRacing deals according to adam stern uh richard childress is auctioning off some of his personal items for covid relief so be sure to look out for that mm -hmm. and then today uh as many of you know would have been the 69th birthday nice. for dale earnhardt what, so wait. that's nice and uh i guess well, uh, uh, it's been a conflict. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I just thought about that. Not. I'm like, I'm like, wait, do I say nice for that or no? Like, I don't know. Like, um, I'm, a I'm, well, I'm, a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna no. So let's move past that and have our have our guests come on at the top of the hour here. So uh, yes. All right, we should she should be coming on here in any minute now. There we go. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey how's, how's it going, going? Haley? Hi, hey, Haley. Hey, what's up? Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hi. hi. Let me know. Going? Is it better? I'm doing good. How are you? Is it better if I turn it this way? Wait, let me turn this off. Oh, let's find out. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's better. better. Yeah, that's Sweet. way better. Yeah. That's what I had to do on my last one. All right, for sure. <laughs> okay. well, it's great to have you back on, man. Yeah, we had you on oh, last time. You. you were wrapping up your second season. Um, you already got a race in or a couple races in. Just talk about those. Man, it's been crazy because the year started out at such a fast pace. I was going to Daytona for like six to eight weeks in a row, flying back and forth from California. It was just hectic. There was so much traveling. I was I was tired a lot. It was constantly those five-hour flights, five, six-hour flights, um, waking up really early, early in the morning, flying back out, flying back to North Carolina. And I think the season started out at such a fast pace. And then all of a sudden, all this happened. And I'm really not used to not being at a fast pace. And now I'm like, what do I do with my life? I have no purpose. Legit, like, I'm like, what if racing got canceled, like, for the year? What would I do? I'm like, I have nothing else to do except social media, which, like, what do I do there without racing? So that's all it is. <laughs> yeah. No, I've always had that thought, too. It's like, what if racing just got canceled or just, like, banned, you know, worldwide or something like that? Just what would I do yeah. with my free time? You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, now it's, like, kind of happening. Well, in mm -hmm. a sense, but... And if it did happen, I honestly wouldn't be shocked. I'd oh. probably die because I'm not yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one thing I did see that you did was uh, I racing, and I do oh, have to yeah, ask yeah. this because we're we're friends I with one of the guys right in that. Here. I'll show well, you. There it is. Well, uh -oh. while you're... oh, nice. Oh, oh, that's nice. Oh, that's a nice. Don't setup. mind the seat cushion on it because I'm really short, and so I can't like the wheels <laughs> too high, and we can't move it. <laughs> okay. Well, well also, we're... also sometimes those uh, sim those sim seats, like some of them, you need a little bit more support in those. So, like sometimes the cushions isn't the greatest either. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, my, my pillow's working out decent. <laughs> we, we're friends with one of the guys in that race. Uh, you might know Winval, Michael Cozy. Uh -huh. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, was, what was the deal that happened there at Richmond uh, a few weeks back? Okay, so I just started iRacing, and iRacing, yeah, it helps with racing, but keep in mind, it's not like you're driving a real car, especially like on the stationary sims that don't move or anything. Like, I'm used to feeling everything through the seat, and then when you're feeling everything through the wheel, it's a little, it's very different, not just a little different, very different. And so I would love to have a motion sim, but <laughs> for the one I have, uh, it's just, it's different. I'm still getting used to it. And Ryan asked me to do that race or whatever. And I was like, I'm not ready. Like I've been practicing, but like I'm not ready to do it. And I was like, you know what, whatever. Like I know a bunch of people are doing it. Like who cares? Let's just, I'll just try it and see how I knew I was terrible. And <laughs> so I was like, the thing I knew, I was like, I'm fine, whatever. Like, at least I know I'm bad on the sim. But I won that race, and then there was just caution after caution every two laps. And officially, I just got burnt out because I was out of the uh, quick fix repairs, and I was already in, like, last because of getting wrecked multiple times. I was like, you know what? I quit. And it's so, like, in all honesty, <laughs> in all honesty, uh, I was grabbing my keyboard that fell on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I didn't realize that they were green. I thought they were still under caution because, like, it's not like you can really, like, it's not like it says, like, something's like as things are going on. And mm -hmm. so I looked down away from the screen. I was grabbing my keyboard off the floor. And then all of a sudden they were coming. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to log out and I couldn't log out quick enough. I was like, oh, man, I just wrecked that guy. And all of a sudden my Twitter started going off. I was like, no. Oh, 
Darian sent yeah. me a text because I was like out doing something that night, and he goes, "Bro, Haley just crashed uh, Winvow," and I'm yeah. like, "No way!" I'm like, out of all the people <laughs> in the race, and Winvow just happened to be streaming with like 500 people watching too. And I was like, "What?" I'm like, "What the hell?" And then he was like, "He was like, what happened?" Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Haley Diggin versus Winvow, a rivalry you never yeah. expected in 2020. Yeah, exactly, you didn't. <laughs> so I was like, "What?" Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I was oh, like, man. oh man, I like, I couldn't even say sorry because like I already logged out too. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> I didn't oh, well. even know. I didn't know who I wrecked or anything, or even if I wrecked anyone because I literally logged well, out. Well, I mean, technically, as as... I mean, technically though, it's like, it's like, yeah, you, technically you did wreck him, but it's like, it's an, it's, it's not like you like killed him, I guess. You know what I mean? No, I it's guess that, but. Like, in all honesty, we got to keep in mind that it is still a video game. Yeah. And, like, you still have that reset button. And, like, yeah. you don't wreck anything. So, it's just, I don't know. No, but Winvow is usually, he, he <laughs> always, like, he's he always avoids these, like, massive wrecks. Because yeah. he races on the super speedways a lot in his streams. Uh-huh. So, like, he was able to just save that truck, no problem. Just didn't hit yeah. the wall. Didn't hit anything. Was still able to finish. Right, that's I good. Was, like, 18th, though, or something like that. Where'd you finish? Oh, man. Where'd you finish? Like, what, 30th or something? Something like that. Probably. I was, I was consistently between... 25th and like 33rd <laughs> so i was very consistent me and ron caps were going at it for a while <laughs> oh, you and alexander rossi were like getting in the most trouble like everyone was like oh it's it's them again like oh my god like oh, kept we just kept wrecking each other and we're yeah. talking i i honestly i don't think he was trying to but like, i wasn't trying to it just <laughs> it happens because you don't have the same feel of when the car is getting loose or tight once it happens you're already way too far into it to kind of like back off and save it without losing a bunch yeah. of ground you know that's a good segue my next question for you is like uh, to kind of talk about the difference between the two like i mean um, mm-hmm. uh, scott dixon a couple weeks ago a uh, famous indycar driver talked about you know how it's not the same and uh what happened, Jared? He nearly got what banned from iRacing for for yeah. saying that stuff. Like, yeah, I, yeah, iRacing like threatened yeah, to ban him, like, and then like, IndyCar basically like clapped back, like, "No, you're not. Yeah, or we're like, just going to get off." Your no, platform. you're not. Yeah, yeah, like, no, you're not doing that. So, like, kind of talk about yeah. the difference, you know, uh, for some of us who who uh, who wouldn't know. I think that iRacing is great for practicing, great for seat time because being a stock car is expensive as hell (laughs) and running laps especially when you run off sponsor money and things like that sponsors don't pay for you to go practice they pay for you to go race tv time stuff like that that's what they want and so that's one thing that it's hard to get a lot of seat time so the simulator is great for that and i'm really glad during this time i got mine i had time to get it all set up and ready to go because i've had that thing for almost four or five years and i just haven't been able to set it up because i'm not i'm tech savvy when it comes to social media but not when it comes like all the pc type stuff Mm -hmm. and uh, all the gaming side so i finally had time to get set up uh the guys over at iRacing did help me out that so super pumped about that but it is different because you're not feeling everything through the seat. And that's something that's a big part of racing is you grew up with that feel and then you have to change it, which it's fine. Like I'm really glad we have simulators, but it also takes out the fear factor side of wrecking and knowing that if I wreck right now, like there goes thousands and th- tens of thousands of dollars when you're in like, say like an ARCA car or something. And there goes all that money and all that work your team put in. And it's mostly the disappointment cause of it and like letting everyone down like that's what really weighs on me when I wreck out or something like that but on the simulator you're pretty much by yourself and so you do get that little reset button you still get faster pairs and those aren't things that you get in the real life racing scene but it is a great tool and I'm so glad we have it because I get practice all these tracks that we're going to go back to racing to when I haven't been a seat it's been in a seat for a couple months Uh, Really quick, I want to thank Judson in the chat for the two-hour super chat. He says, uh, hey, hey, Haley, how's it going? It's going good. I mean, I'm kind of bored, but (laughs) I I pretty much – I'm not not someone who sleeps in at all. Like, I've always been up at, like, 6 in the morning and kind of getting everything done because I'm always busy. But now I've been sleeping until like nine, ten o'clock just to kill a couple hours in my day. That's sleeping. So I have in. nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah, that's my sleeping. <laughs> like, in. No, if not, whole... my dad busts down my door and he's like, "Get up! We're not lazy. Go for a run." Or nah, go for a run. This whole quarantine, man, it's, it's messed up my sleeping schedule. I mean, I won't yeah. go to bed until like four or five in the morning. Then won't get up until. See, like one okay, or two, I'm not know? the only one. Yeah. Okay, the first week or two, I legit couldn't fall asleep till four in the morning. Because you got nothing to do. So it's like, yeah, you do? I, I'm, I've just... been that way for. Ever now yeah. uh-huh. I'm back on my, <laughs> okay. I used to work night shift until like five in the morning and now I'm doing the same thing where I'm like I'm like sitting on my phone and I'm like oh the sun's coming up wonderful yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh. well, yeah. I, 
me, I've been so weird because like usually I like to get him maybe like five forty-five, six. But now we have a cat, and he's been coming in at like four thirty morning, getting right up on top of me, and I'm like, "Shugs, can you get off of me?" Oh yeah. my god! So I bought a dog, and oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know Somebody why. Somebody asked like, right about that. The, here. Yeah, right before the quarantine started or was starting, I was talking to this lady on, I think it's it Craigslist. And I was like, hey, like, I heard you got some puppies for sale. Like, can I buy one? <laughs> and they were pretty cheap for, like, a Rottweiler puppy. So, and I'm not too specific when it comes to, like, oh, I want it. Like, make sure it has, the, like, these certain papers. And make sure I, like, want to see the parents. I'm like, I don't care. Just give me the dog. And I'm like, the dog's not okay. <laughs> so, I ended up buying a dog. And now the dog, legit, what wakes me up is the dog poops in the crate. And I'm like, I can't take it anymore. It smells oh, so bad. So, I had to go clean it up. So, that's pretty much, like, my alarm in the morning, which he does at around 9. So <laughs> I feel the pain. We had that when we got our uh, second dog, just that we keep her in the bathroom. So I'd get up at six in the morning and she hadn't been potty trained yet. Mm-hmm. And that was my duty at six in the morning was yeah. get up and five minutes later, clean after the dog. Uh, I want to think we got a few super chats. Mr. Ant Ant says, uh, do you guys all think that uh, we'll see the night Martinsville cup race with schedule change? I uh, don't know. I don't know. I don't know at this point. Yes. Like everything. I don't know. Everything's so do. unexpected. Yeah. Like it, as there's so many unexpected turns, you're like, all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, we're going back here, and then all of a sudden I'll get a text from four or five different people, and they're like, I heard we're going back at this race. I heard we're going back at Charlotte or Mid Ohio or there's so many like for the Arca Racing Series, but like there's so many different things that are going around. I'm like, well, what you heard is not what they heard, and what my team heard yeah. is not what you heard, what your team heard. So it's funny. It's crazy. You know, just today we had two conflicting reports. We'll get yeah. to that a little bit later, though. But it's, uh, yeah, and it's so one, there was one more super chat. Steve Castanenda asked, uh, "Hey Haley, what is your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch Pokemon?" <laughs> Oh no. Just say Pikachu. Is the little yellow thing? <laughs> yeah. That's just say Pikachu. <laughs> that's the default. That's, that's the only one I know. Yeah, that's the default one. And and you and and you can quote that folks, the little yellow guy from Pokemon. The little yeah, yellow guy. Little yellow one. I yeah. think he had like a movie made about him like a while ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think yeah. Brian Reynolds was oh, a yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're, like I don't even know if that was like actually a Pokemon movie or I don't know. It was like some was. little kids Close movie enough. or whatever. Yeah. It was something. It wasn't serious. So but. so okay, speaking of like, you know, Fun things you talk about getting a dog. Haley, one thing I saw, you know, you switched from TRD and now you're a Ford. One of the cool things about that is you got a new whip. Talk about that. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I love it so much. It's legit like what brings me happiness during my day. Like, I'm just just gonna go drive. Like, my mom's never, I never really run my mom's errands. And now I'm like, you need me to go here. You need me to go by the store. Like, I'll go over here for you. And I've had people stop me and they're like, you're the person driving around town with the loud car. I'm like, yep, that was me. <laughs> and I make sure every time I drive it, I turn the exhaust in sport mode so it's super loud. And <laughs> oh. You can feel it. <laughs> it's cool. nice. And now everyone wants to drive my car. I'm like, oh, now you guys want to be friends. <laughs> so so I, I, I got to ask, like, you can answer this if you want to, if you're comfortable. What's, mm-hmm. the, quickest, what's the quickest you've gone in it? Yeah. <laughs> what's the quickest I've gone in it? Actually, Hypothetically. Yeah. Hypothetically. Surprisingly, I haven't gone that fast. Like, we've had some, like, we have like backcountry roads that are just like straight liners, but like Hayden, he made fun of me last night. He's like, "You haven't even got it up to 120." I'm like, "Well, I don't want to get a ticket." So <laughs> <laughs> I honestly haven't gone that fast in it. Mostly, I just like stay in first gear and like go super fast and like shift up. Mm-hmm. And then by that time, I don't usually get that fast. <laughs> I just like feeling it take off. <laughs> oh, I've gone quicker in my Impala than you have in a Mustang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> More than likely. Uh, really quick. Thank you, Jimbo Burrito, for the $10. Says, hope you guys are all doing well. Yep. You guys are doing an excellent job with all kind of NASCAR coverage and content during this pandemic. Happy Thanks, 100th man. episode and to more great content from all of you. Yeah, so, for sure. Thanks, man. Thank mm. you. So I guess we can get into the first kind of story here since we were talking about it for a bit um about the sport restarting that's actually the whole reason that phelps couldn't come on today because he's too busy you know running the sport yeah uh you know so 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 self-involved um um, so matt weaver reported that the tentative restarting schedule is darlington on the 17th then an xfinity race at darlington the 19th cup jeez it's gonna take forever cup the 20th 300 miler on wednesday and then Arca at Charlotte, May 23rd, Coke 600, May 24th, Xfinity and Trucks the 25th and 26th at Charlotte, and then Charlotte again on Wednesday the 27th, then Martinsville, Bristol, Atlanta, and Homestead. 
So uh, I guess one, how do you think this start's going to go? And then uh, for you, Haley, is there any water to the Arca one? I just want to know that off the bat because I mm-hmm. love Arca. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> do you, is there? Does it say if fans are allowed to be back? They or, won't be. No, they won't no? be back. No, no. Well, shoot. I was going to say it's going to be crazy. I don't know when the fan attendance is going to be back, I guess. But it's going to be crazy the first race that the fans do get to come back to you. And I don't think it's going to be exactly the same without the fans there because that's like the whole experience. And that's that's what makes NASCAR NASCAR is the fans, uh, which I know they're doing the best they can with everything going on. But still, the first race that fans get to come back to it's going to be crazy, I feel like. Oh, yeah. No, it is going to be crazy for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I can't remember a race where there never was any fans, too. So that's going to be interesting. Me They're racing <laughs> at Indy for they, a few years. Oh, yeah, that's uh, right. They're racing at Indy. Duh. The, that's right. The, 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 the closest I've ever come was... Uh, well, the 2019 spring Bristol race. I was there in person for that one. Oh that yeah, one. yeah. So Bristol, oh, so yeah, so, small. so spring Bristol and and the Brickyard already have a heads up. So that's basically mm-hmm. what it's gonna look like. But it's gonna be weird at first. But I mean, the the sport needs its television money. And from what I was told, you know, in the in the television contracts, like NASCAR has laid out to where all they have to do is just run a race, and then you get paid. It doesn't have to be any sort of race, just a race. Yeah. So that's why you're gonna see a bunch of. You know, races at Darlington and, you know, mm-hmm. Charlotte, too, because they're in close proximity, you know, of these teams. I mean, these teams can just drive out there, you know, drive there and back if they want to. I'd have to imagine, though, that after a, uh, um, after about maybe a couple of weeks, fatigue would set, you know, would uh, would definitely play a big factor. I mean, they already have to work long hours as is. Like, yeah, I mean, Jared, like we first saw it at, at, at freaking Homestead, like some of these people look like they were about to kill each other. I was like, damn, mm-hmm. like, oh. that was it. I was cool. Like they were just done. I like I knew by the end of the year last year I'd been like oh my gosh this is dragging on because it was the first time we'd mm. been doing stuff like every day of the week and then that way like we go to the track and we see some of these people and like I think someone like on one side said something and someone else was like what the hell are you saying we're like shit are they gonna have a fight right <laughs> oh, <now?" yeah>. it's <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man like dude everyone's was, going was insane intense. I mean because they mm-hmm. work all the way from some sometimes January all the way to November. So now yeah. you have this quarantine thing, which is giving everybody a a very long break just in everything. And now you come back, and now you have to run multiple races a week. Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I, I I definitely feel like these first few weeks it is going to get very stressful having to go, you know, from a track to shop, track to shop, you know, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, and I stuff. think it's it's going to take a lot to. I think get the the setups and everything, and getting everything prepared fully to like the best. Because there's at the end of the day, they only have so many crew guys and mm-hmm. so many guys that can work on stuff. So many guys that are going to be at the shop working, while others at the track. So, just a matter of getting everything prepared to the fullest, also, which is hard to set up cars in this like meantime if guys are still at the shop or or whatever. Like how they only have a few people or anything like that, and it's hard to get everything prepared when you don't know which race you're going back to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's because what, that's you got say it again. I saw, that's what I was thinking because like you know take your crew for example like you know yes North Carolina says that it's essential they can get back in the shop right now probably mm-hmm. but why go work on a car if you're not even sure where it's going to go to exactly because you have short track cars you got uh the super speedway cars and I know like Talladega and Salem were right next to each other so it's not like you can make like a you, you, it's totally different and so especially if you're setting up a car for Charlotte mm-hmm. now or if it's a road course you so you just it is a lot to be thrown into the equation yeah. So hey, real that, quick, uh, I want to thank Slappy Joe in the chat hey. for the four ninety nine super chat. Congrats on, uh, congrats on 100 episodes. Congrats yeah, and congrats second on the second. Wish you could have won, man. Yeah. That's good uh, Haley, with that being said, like, you know, let, let's take it, you know, your point of view here. Uh, think about you guys logistically, your team, where you're at. If you if it was up to Haley Diggin, what track would you say that Arca should go to first? Okay, well, I was really looking forward to Talladega because we have really, really good super speedway cars. And after Daytona, I was like, okay, if a little more, like, now that I know what I'm getting myself into, I'm like, I want to go back to super speedway racing. But everyone says, at least everyone at the shop says we have really good a mile and a half cars and stuff like that, too. So, I mean, Charlotte's going to be a good one. I'm glad, I'm almost glad we're not going back to, like, a super short track because, uh, short tracks like they are fun but i've raced so many short tracks and i want to go to a new track that's mm-hmm. gonna be fun. i'm glad we're not going to a road course first 
And so I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to get thrown like back some... in in the hardest one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like Sonoma's out of the equation looking like for the rest of the year. Cause I think yeah. they said California is just probably not going to have any races that year. So like good there. <laughs> what if they decide yeah. to do the Roval in Arca? Now that would be a sight to behold. That would be a sight. That to would be right really there. cool. <laughs> how, how many, how, how many it, hours of eye racing do you think you would do on the Roval if you had to get ready? I've already done quite a few at the Roval just because it's fun to drive. <laughs> but I'd be on there every single day, which I already am on there every single day, except the past two days because the Wi-Fi went out in our house. So I don't have any Wi-Fi. Oh, it did? So, oh, no. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> oh, no, and my keep... dad's trying to say it again. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. Uh, my freaking college keeps throttling my internet all the time. So like, oh. I'll just be on. I'll, I'll just be grinding on like 2K or something like that. And then all of a sudden, just oh. like, oh, just off. Cuts just out. Off for it. Like, yeah. Yeah. How nice. Yeah, it's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My dad signed me up for a race this weekend coming up, or is trying to sign me up for a race. I was like, okay, like let me go, um, let me go drive the truck, the off road truck on there, mm. and see how I am like at this track and with this setup. And so I was ho- trying to hop on there, and I called him I'm like, yo, what happened to the Wi Fi? Like I know the guy was just here today, and he's like, oh, let me go ask mom. And so he asked my mom, and she's like, oh yeah, we're not gonna have Wi Fi till Wednesday. I'm like, okay, well it's Wednesday, and we still don't have Wi Fi, so. <laughs> I want to ask yeah. this because I know we, we we got to talk to you for a bit at Daytona uh, and then I was like walking through the pits on Sunday and I saw you were with all the drivers. So what was it like to mm-hmm. set up a meeting and meet with the president? That was I didn't expect it to actually happen. In all honesty, I was at a party like a little like get together party. Um, I went in the NASCAR people's house and uh chip ended up walking by me and they just mentioned something about like the president possibly coming to the track and i was like hey yo can like you get me in on that meeting (laughs) and he's like yeah he's like i'm gonna text you over like a list of stuff that you need to give me like a bunch of questions and stuff like asking if i was like a legal citizen stuff like that different things i was like yep (laughs) so uh i sent him over all the information and he didn't respond so i was like i don't know if it's gonna happen and so then he ended up responding. He's like, I'm working on it. I'm like, okay, cool. And so I ended up making that tweet out. Like, hey, Mike, my goal for today is to get my helmet signed by, signed by Trump. And I walked around with my helmet all day. <laughs> and everyone's looking at me weird. It's like, who's the chick in heels with the helmet? And so, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, and so I had my helmet around all day and I made that tweet. And then all of a sudden my Twitter started going off. Like, usually I know like the average amount of like it dinging off and like me knowing like the feedback I get from something and it was just going like and I'm like uh oh and so I go on there thinking I'm in like another conflict or something and he ended up uh Trump Jr. ended up responding to my tweet and then he ended up DMing me on there and we got it all figured out so that was really cool and then meeting him it was it was funny we were all in like this back area behind the Daytona 500 club and there was like Ten, it was all cup drivers and there's me <laughs> everyone's in their race suits and i'm just the girl over here with heels I'm like, <laughs> how did i get into this and there was a few drivers that were trying to get into it but like a few cup drivers and they like told them no <laughs> i'm just chugging along over wow, here wow so I'm, 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 funny. Curi- I'm i'm curious just generally curious like did donald trump seem like he knew who you were or what do you think he was actually really cool and we actually like stood there and talked for a while and I talked to his wife for a while and he was just a super very personable and he was asking me questions about my racing and everything going on and like how I did and he asked first why I wasn't in a suit too and I was like well I don't race cup yet but (laughs) yeah so I was like well I don't race cup yet and so he was like okay well I did have you race here this weekend I was like I actually raced the other day I got second and his wife like chimed in and it was just it was a super fun (laughs) experience that's a once in a lifetime thing oh yeah that really is too just being there that whole weekend that whole atmosphere just like as a fan mm-hmm. just like walking in the garage area all weekend and like you know just like before the racing and then it who was it it was me jared and idk we were like on top of the fan thing and then like uh it the fly felt over. like an early yeah. 2000s race it, it, it honestly it, it felt yeah. like when i was at races in 2006 2007 it was like just mm-hmm. the atmosphere it was like everything was ramping up, and then it's like one to go, and we're like, "All right, Junior's on the flag stand, ready to go." I think we under ten thousand people. <laughs> we even said twenty twenty is going to be the best year ever. Not exactly. Yeah, yeah. we said that. <laughs> yeah. It we started like, <laughs> out at such a high, and then whoop. <laughs> well, no, it was like an immediate thud because it yeah. started raining, and then the whole backstory of that too is me and Jarrett, we nearly got hypothermia or whatever you call it because we had <laughs> yeah. to walk back in the rain to our so, cars. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had we had stayed after the rest of the group had, and so when that giant monsoon came through that canceled it uh, till Monday, we were waiting in the garage area, and then one of the officials like came over to us that we had like seen throughout the weekend. It's like, hey guys, just letting you know they're gonna like, kick everyone out now. You might as well go. And so we run from the garage all the way around three and four out down the front stretch to, a, uh, I think it was like Texas Roadhouse or it something. It was, it was, yeah. <laughs> and soaked. And then like get in the car, I had a sweatshirt on mm-hmm. for some reason because I was wearing a sweatshirt in Florida. Oh yeah, I did um, too, because it got poor, cold. Poor, so, like, poor, yeah. poor, poor guy was getting hypothermia in the back of my car. Oh yeah, so. he was shaking too. <laughs> and I was damn near just about to take my clothes off too. Cause like it was so Ma- freaking ma- cold. Meanwhile, oh while that all happened to him, uh, it was me, my wife, Claudia, and and our friend Sloppy Joe. I was like looking at the radar the whole time. I was like, guys, if we leave right now, we should get back to the truck right before the storm hits. Literally get in, and then it starts pouring. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. And then that's when good. we started walking. And then Oof. everyone asked why we were staying back. And I'm like, well, me and Jared, we got to like make connections. We got to like, you know, talk to people. That's what we you're, do every You're time figuring out which one of the podcast members here is the ones that are smarter with their, you know, safety and getting stuck in the track and everything yeah. like that. And then the others are just like, yeah, we don't care. We're just so like, did, did, mm-hmm. did you stay around like after the first delay or like at, until Monday or is it like had to fly out after that? So it's actually funny because there's usually the flights from Daytona are all booked up because I always fly back to California. And so mm-hmm. everything's always booked up and it's just, it's always chaos if you stay for the whole race. So I actually just go to driver intros and then I end up leaving after. Cause like I've watched a couple of the 500s before, but I usually, cause like it's usually pretty boring in the beginning and it gets good towards the end. And so it's, everyone's just kind of waiting it out. And so I'm like, man, we could sit here. Like, I've already been here for two weeks. And so I'm like, we can just watch it, see all the same stuff. So I actually, I go to driver intros, kind of hang out with everyone there. Um, go to like, and then we pretty much just head out from there because it's when it's less chaos and it's good flights. Yeah. So is it one of those things that like, like once you've actually done racing, is it like, you, you want to be doing the racing. You don't want to be watching as much. Exactly. Yeah. Like I en- really enjoy watching racing and I enjoy watching with my friends and stuff. But like when you've been there at that track for like weeks and weeks and weeks and you finally race, you did your job. It's just like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I, I guess I can relate to that. Cause like I, I compete in fishing tournaments and like when I'm out there in a, in a tournament, I'm like always trying, trying to figure out a way to, you know, find next fish, do something different, you know, do whatever I have to. But then like, I can maybe watch it on TV for a little bit, maybe not the entire day. So yeah, I, I knew Danny was gonna bring up fishing. I knew it. He always does. He always does. That. That, hey, that is my, that is my that is my competitive nature. I yeah, mean, a, no, no, I'm not, I'm not a racer. I'm a fisher. You'd have a podcast day. bingo. Have Danny's things are bringing up fishing and Alex right. Bowman. And really quick, thank you to Max <laughs> McCurry for the 9.99. Says congrats on the hundred episode. You guys keep up the great content, especially with no racing going on currently. Well, hopefully sure. there will be racing going on currently. Oh, yeah, uh, one hopefully. thing I wanted to follow up on with the Daytona weekend was about the race you in so you ran really well but there was like one incident on the back stretch that happened Can you like go oh, kind of go into oh, detail yeah. what I happened know. there i had to, i had to ask him, sorry. <laughs> yeah no it's all good um i thought i murdered a man on the back yeah stretch. i was like oh no i was like no way. <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't tr- i wasn't trying to do anything like what i already was far enough back that my in my car was really really good and it was coming in really good so we were fast and i was I, like he wasn't getting he was very like it darty everywhere and it's hard to draft off someone when they're darty but like I need as much ground as I can get and keep in mind like I don't know the balance yet between like getting too much on someone in the draft or like not being enough on them and the whole weekend I like I wasn't enough on people and so I like just was going and then all of a sudden he goes Zoom! and I was like ah! <laughs> and so I I ended up apologizing, talked to the guy after. Like, I straight up, I wasn't trying to wreck him. At, like, why would I wreck a guy back for, like, eight? Come on. It's, like, halfway through the race. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. so I – it's complete ahead. accident. Yeah, no, I was, like, low-key rooting for him because, like, oh, I don't know this guy. And, like, I always root for underdogs. But then, like, come back from, like, commercial, I think. And then all of a sudden, he's just, like, laid out. And I'm just, like, what? I'm, like, what? I know. But then, I like, know. watching the replay, it looked like one of those things where it's, like, I don't know, just, like – I've never driven a race car, especially at, yeah. at freaking Daytona ever in my life. So, like, what are those, like, traveling speeds like, you know, especially when you're in the draft? You know, like, what is that So, like? it doesn't feel that fast until something goes wrong. Okay. That's, like, you don't realize how fast you're going. So, what ended up happening? 
happening was the guy was right here and he you have to be sunk down to that yellow line. Like if you're off the yellow line, it makes it really hard to draft off you. Mm. And so, especially when it's just you two. And so he came up and they came back down. And when he came back down, I tried coming back down with him and it sliced his bumper just enough to send him the opposite way. Ooh. But it didn't, I didn't quarter panel him. It's just the air right there. It's like a little pocket and it just shot him towards the right. And so it's just, it's, a hard fine line because you're trying to make up this ground on people and you don't want to get too far back and left behind. And so it's just, it's a fine line that I'm still learning. Like that was my first super speed race, but it's so much fun because all, you're all wide open. There's not much you can do. It's not like people are blowing by you. So you have to actually use like the technic technical side of it, of drafting, knowing who to draft with and different things like that, which I, I started figuring that out. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan was telling us a bit about that. It's like when you're at the end of the draft, it's like really, really easy to fall away from it. Like, did that ever happen like in practice or during the race to you where you're just like, like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Wait, why am I falling back? Yeah. So it's what's very frustrating is when someone side drafts you and you feel your whole car because you're wide open, obviously, and your whole car just bogs down. It's like goes, wow. And you just know you're getting pulled back. And it takes so long to get that momentum back. And so it that's the only frustrating part and like in practice i practiced that with my team and we just tried it out because i don't know what that feels like never done that before so it was it's a different feeling and you know when you do it good to someone and all of a sudden they just drop back and you're like yeah <laughs> so it it's i feel like i learned so much during that race at daytona and everyone's like oh super speed racing boring i'm like that was the most fun i ever had <laughs> <laughs> Really quick to, in the chat, uh, thank you, Daniel, for the five dollars. Congrats on the hundredth episode, Thanks, and uh, keep up the great work. Yep, appreciate yeah, it. Of course. So, have you been watching the Pro Invitational series uh, each week or not? I've been watching a little bit of it. I've still been kind of like doing my own thing, like kind of like a routine at the house. I've been gone a few days. Um, I went up to the river, and so <laughs> and um, everyone's like complaining about quarantine and stuff, and everyone gets pissed off at me, but. <laughs> Uh, I was at the river with just a few of my buddies I've been with um, practically this whole quarantine practicing and driving around. And um, so social, we were social there. distancing, of course. Yeah. Absurd, right? yeah. We stayed six feet apart. So it's okay. <laughs> like I was on the wakeboard and they were like in the boat. Mm. So it's cool. And so <laughs> uh, we're pretty much, I've been watching a little bit of it. I watched a few of the races. It's just, it's different to watch. And so I have been watching a little bit though. And I mostly, even with NASCAR racing, like I always watch a truck race. I always oh, yeah. watch Park oh, Xfinity oh. and then, and then I watch the start of cup and then I watch the end of it. So I never really sit there for a full race besides truck racing. So I'm like, I want to know what I'm getting myself into. It's like I'm eventually in trucks. And so I just, it's hard for me to sit there and watch and pretty much any sport. I just, cause I want to be doing it and it just makes right. me frustrated. Cause I'm like, I would have done that. And so <laughs> I just saw the next super chat. I know. I know why you're laughing. I just saw the super chat too. <laughs> Stratus, and, 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 and after what is it? Is it bad? No, no. It well, I, depends after, on how you view after he, this. After he says this, I've got a question for Haley about what he's got to say. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, this yeah, is partly yeah. a question for all of us. It says uh, Stratus, thanks for the two dollars. Says, have any of you guys watched Tiger King? Of course, of course, I watched ah. that show. I love it. Dude, that's what happens, man. When you give white trash tigers, that's that's what happens, man. That's just what happens. So, Haley, have you watched Tiger King? So I started it. I just started it. I'm like two episodes in, which I started it. I was going to watch it, and then I got hooked on this other show called Outer Banks, and so I just finished that one, and so I'm going to go back and watch this one now. No, so, it's here, the greatest. Here, tiger King's the greatest here, documentary here, here's, ever. Here's what I got to ask you because we we're struggling to get Jared here to watch it. Should yeah. he or should he not watch it? I've honestly been very entertained the first two seasons or first two episodes. Yeah, I wish there and, was two seasons. I wish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so like, I was on the treadmill and I had my phone up watching it. My mom's on the spin bike next to me, and she's like, "What the hell are you watching? Why are you watching Tigers?" And I'm like, I'm "Like, mom, you wouldn't understand." And so I started watching it, and then I just. I fell off there because I found another TV show that me and my friend were watching. And so I was like, okay, now I'm going to get back into it, which I just <laughs> finished that last night. So I'll start tonight. <laughs> I, uh, 
I can't. I don't want to watch it. I'll be completely honest. Why? These guys but are it's so me. good. It's I you have so them. much time on your hands. Yeah. Not like we gotta do much else. That's what I keep telling him. Like he never does anything like that. If it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, if it's Netflix or something, I want to watch something like Mindhunter or Peaky Blinders or you know, if 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 it's a documentary like the Aaron Hernandez thing. And thank you, Jake, for the five dollars. But I don't want to. I don't want to watch a bunch of rednecks with tigers. It's like, I mean, it's fun. It's funny though. It's really funny though too. It's kind of like. I don't I'm, know. It, I'm betting it's funny. It's a bunch you of idiots. You gotta diversify your interests. You exactly. can't just be stuck you can't on the same thing. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's, really, it's way it's way more interesting than I thought it was. Like I thought it was gonna be about something something, but it was definitely not what I was thinking. So mm-hmm. and dude, I already know for a fact you're already caught up on those other shows you just mentioned. So it's like, why are you like you got yeah. something new? Like I know for yeah. a fact you're all caught up on Piggy Blinders and <laughs> this is a once in a lot of show. You have to watch it. Yeah, you gotta watch it, man. Come on, just watch at least one, and you'll be hooked. <laughs> On, on the topic of that, just a funny side note here. I actually, just for the fun of it, sent a LinkedIn connection to Carol Baskins, and to my surprise, she actually accepted it. <laughs> no way. You did so, not. So, so now I am I am a LinkedIn connection of Carol hey, Baskins. Jared Are you just, kidding? Jared just no, I'm joined, not kidding. No, Jared just joined LinkedIn the other day, too, and he has like 28 connects. Dude, add her. You got to add her. Do that, I'll do that for oh. me. Yeah, dude, I'll, we got to get her on the podcast, too, on your channel. We can talk about whatever. You know how insane that would be if you got her? You know how many people are probably trying to get her right now? Dude, Joe Rogan probably already has her lined up. Probably, yeah. Here, probably here's, so. the, here's the thing. Once all the social distance stuff is done, like, her zoo and all those other ones, they're going to get tons of people wanting to go there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't really like zoos, personally, anyways. That's just me, though. I don't either. Yeah, it's too boring for yeah, me. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's just like, hey, you want to go to SeaWorld? Like, no. <laughs> like, I don't no. care. Like, no. Yeah, well, I'm not well, a scenic person. Mm-mm. I don't like like going like i don't want to go look at the sunset or like go like hike somewhere i'm like take me to six flags stuff like that if you go to bush gardens in tampa like it mm. doubles as a zoo and a amusement park so yeah yeah bush gardens cool king's dominion these are like those are like more east coast things though i'm down on yeah the east i haven't coast been i've been to care it's Car- carowinds Carolines. right i think so yeah 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 i think that's what it's called i think it's in south carolina yeah. but i've been there but the one that's close it's only like an hour and a half from my house is six flags so that's where we go what about uh knott's berry farm you ever been there yeah that place is cool but size six flags is still better have, okay. have you ever been to dollywood no i have not next time you come to bristol you need to fit in dollywood yeah okay yeah, yeah, dollywood. i'll put that in but no knott's berry what sets it apart for me is that they, they have biscuits and jam so i'm just like just Ooh, like i'm always just like good. doing whatever i'm just always just getting oh. whatever from there all the so time. yeah you guys get like stuff around you meanwhile like i'm stuck in like i live in northern illinois so all we have is cornfields and soybean fields like we have nothing like that that's like anywhere near that fun like yeah, yeah. It's, it's just nothing <laughs> no it's that, that sucks bad. man no, i'm sorry yeah, no there's no other way around it it sucks <laughs> it's terrible we, uh, we have a racetrack though so that's good um yeah. isn't it about so, the clothes talk- yes <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, but we talked about this last time, um, and I joined it, and I am addicted to it. Thank you, Luke Swan, for the one ninety nine. So Cedar Point is lit. Yeah, my my grandma and brother go to that. But uh, we talked about it last time. I'm addicted to it now. Darian's addicted to it. Uh, TikTok. Hey, yeah. Any anything? You yeah. you you recommended it, so I got it. And I, <laughs> like I I drove home in a snowstorm, got back at like eleven, and like sat on TikTok for a while. And I look up and it's like four in the morning and I had to get on a flight at seven. I'm like, oh my God, she's right. It was yeah. addictive. It, it's, I spent it's two hours before hopping on here editing a TikTok. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm committed to the TikTok lifestyle. Um, it's pretty much, I keep my more personality edgier side on TikTok than I do on Instagram. <laughs> like I show more personality and like what's going on in my life because I know it's a different demographic and stuff. And for some reason, like, sponsors don't care about tiktok and so they don't even look at it and it's like i don't have to promote anything like i can just be myself or i don't have to be worried about like certain obligations i could just pretty much do like do myself do my like do me <laughs> damn the sponsors really tie you down like that like on like twitter or instagram that sort of thing or well it's not actually like it's not compared to a lot of drivers like not bad at all but like it's not like okay you have to post this or like hey we need you to post this we need you to promote this thing mm-hmm. and so like those are different things because because i run off sponsor money and i race off sponsor money i have to make the sponsors feel like hey you're getting like a deal like that's the reason why i built my social media the way it is and that's the reason why i've gotten the sponsors that i have is because i'm more valuable than just racing i bring the social media side into it i'm connecting with fans and that fan engagement sells product 
and I'm showing everything about my life, which I make that personal connection. And that's what, that's how people sell product. And that's why I get those sponsors. And so it's, it's something that I obviously have to regulate, but I still be as open as I can and as real as I can on there. Well, yeah, I'd have to think someone like you, like uh, a sponsor would be more open to doing more things and having you post, mm-hmm. you know, more things, you know, personally <laughs> on social media. But I'd have to assume with like other cup drivers, like they're just so tied down. It's like people always ask, like, why aren't the drivers as personable? Like, you know, in the mm-hmm. 80s and 90s, I'm like, well, money, sponsorship dollars, man. Like you can't. That's what I'm saying. So like eventually, like we have to find a balance between where you can find, you know, a balance between driver personality and the sponsors still getting a mm-hmm. bang for their buck while being respected <coughs> at the same time. I don't know, yeah. we haven't found it yet, and but I hopefully think that, we do soon. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I think that sponsors... <laughs> My phone's like a 10%. Yeah, no, but I think that sponsors, <laughs> as sponsors, they get so pushy. They can get so pushy with what they want if you don't have the right sponsors. And that's the thing that I've always... I've always made sure I tied myself to someone that they let me promote stuff the way I want to promote it. They don't tell me what to do. And that's uh, something I hate is when a sponsor tries to tell me what to post. I'm like, hey, there's a reason why I had the followers I do and you were trying to promote off me. Like, let me do me. Let me, I know how to do it. And so uh, I've always tied myself with people who let me be myself. And that's something like I hear these other sponsors of like people that have like the sponsor's marketing person, like controlling their social media and deleting their posts. I'm like, no, no, I would not be up for that. (laughs) And so I've aligned with really good people, but I think that there's the place where drivers could just get annoyed of it if they're not connected with the right people. And they're like, okay, just let my PR person do it. And then it takes that personable connection away with the fans and it makes the fans not want to engage with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, on the topic of social media, one thing that I noticed, you know, we, you know, we're, we're building our YouTube channels because this is how we promote ourselves and say this is our brand. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot of NASCAR drivers have like done consistent long term YouTube efforts, but I've noticed that you guys have. And, mm-hmm. and recently I noticed, you know, it, the branding changed from being, you know, Haley Deegan 38, but now it's just the Deegans. Well, what mm-hmm. led to that decision to rebrand it all? I think because now in the NASCAR world, which this is not something that I expected necessarily to get into years and years ago. I just, I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just kind of racing off road. And so yeah, it, it was, I w- yeah, it just happened. So we were all 38 in the family. Like that was our number. But mm-hmm. in the NASCAR world, obviously it's different because pretty much every year and every new season you go into, whether you move up a level or if you're changing teams, you're always going to get different numbers. And so that's something that it's hard to align. You have to make your brand pretty much your name or something else like that. You can't do it off a number. So we had to change that, especially now. Like I went from like, oh my gosh, she's 19. Oh, she's four. And it's just constantly changing numbers. And so I've tried to build my Haley Deegan racing brand. But I think that when it comes to YouTube channel, we use each other to keep it growing. And because all of a sudden Hayden will have a month where Hayden's blowing up. And then that helps the YouTube channel. I have a month where I'm blowing up from Daytona. And so it helps, it all helps. And we correlate it into one place. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny you say that. I think uh, sometime at the end of last year, I bought, I went to a NASCAR store in uh, Crossville, Tennessee, and I bought the diecast from your dirt win at Las Vegas. And I was like, uh-huh. cool, now I got a Haley Diggin number 19 diecast. And what happened next week? You said you're in the four cars. Like, oh, well, now no, it's, it's like, oh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like- I know. So I'm signing all these diecasts from last year, and I'm like, do I sign it 19? Do I sign it four? I'm like, do I just put my name? I'm like, that's not specified. <laughs> <laughs> well, then the Switch 2 with Toyota and Ford now. Like, that, yeah. that one, too, was, well, that caught yeah. all of us off guard there. Like, was yeah. that just a, in a while in the making, or was that just something that came together really quick or something like that? I think after KNN, it was just uh, a sit down talk that like me and my dad and my parents had and my manager. And we're like, okay, we need some long term goal because, first of all, sponsors want this long term, want long term deals. And we can't have a long term deal without being with a team or manufacturer long term. And so we just pretty much looked at what's going to be the best route for me to make it to my end goal of racing cup in a competitive car. And mm-hmm. so we had to look at, okay, let's be realistic. Like, what teams are going to have open seats and what teams are going to actually want to develop and stuff like that and actually put a lot of focus on me. And so we just looked at that aspect and we really just, my dad had a really good tie in with Ford back in the day when he used to race rally cars and everything. And so I already knew everyone over there and they grew up around me. I grew up around them knowing all them. And so it's pretty much just 
rekindling an old relationship that I already had. And it's funny. So I'm like, Hey, I'm back. Like I'm no longer running around the pits with my dad carrying his posters. <laughs> and so it's just, it's really fun. And everyone over there is, they just want to help and they really want to, any like ideas that I have, they always get behind and they're just so open to me being myself. Mm-hmm. So as far as uh, Toyota is concerned, no hard feelings against them. Mm-mm. It's just a business move, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was no hard feelings. I still, I still talk to all the people over there and uh, I'm very thankful for what they did for me in the beginning and getting me into the stock car world. And I think I just had to move on to my long-term goal of what I wanted to accomplish. And when you, when you was with uh, Toyota, like I, we talked about that cool Mustang you got, when you was with Toyota, what, what kind of vehicle did you have like personally that you was driving? So I had a Tacoma when I was at uh, Toyota. Okay. And so it, it, it was, I think I've seen it in a video. It was that what the cement color TRD pro. Yeah. It's a cement gray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You had like Which my I've... dream, you had like my dream truck, Haley. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I know. I mobbed that thing around. You know how many times I jumped it like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Mm-hmm. So we're closing in here on the last uh, 15 minutes or so on the show. So what we like to do to end it out uh, is do picks for the race. And while we don't have a race per se, we do have the pro invitational. Um, would you be down doing some picks with us before we head out for the night? And then I we, might need uh, some help, our... but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know. Okay. Yeah. Week to week either from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> Danny, uh, can you find the entry list really quick? I guess, so what we yeah. what we do, well, while he's looking for that, what we do is three tiers for it. Uh, who's going to suck? Dark, and that's literally what it's called. Who's going to suck? Yeah. Dark horse and winning pick. So uh, what, and then we'll start the with one? suck. Dark horse. So like who might be like good? underdogs, who, you know. Yeah, underdogs, okay. stuff like yeah. that. Um, but Darian, you want to you wanna start off if you got your suck pick at least? Oh, yeah. So, uh, hey, no, I'm playing. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wait, uh, do, that's Windfowl's pick. <laughs> yeah, that's Windfowl's pick already. Do you, do you guys need to hear the entry list first? Uh, yeah, 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 might well. yeah, might as well. Yeah, might as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have Kurt Busch, Brad Kozlowski, Austin Dillon, Kevin Harvick, Ross Chastain, Dale Earnhardt Jr., mm-hmm. Chase Elliott, Eric Almirola, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, Ty Dillon, Clint Boyer, Brennan Poole, Chris Buescher, Kyle Busch, Bobby Labonte, Eric Jones, Matt DiBenedetto, Joey Logano, William Byron, Tyler Reddick, Corey LaJoy, Michael McDowell, Ryan Priest, John Hunter Nemechek, Cole Custer, Jimmy Johnson, Chad Fincham, Garrett Smithley, J.J. Yaley, Joey Gase, Timmy Hill, Parker Claverman, Alex Bowman, Landon Castle, Chris Bale, and Daniel Suarez. <laughs> Damn, I was I was like, wait for you to stop. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, wait. There you go. Gonna, I'm like, I'm like, when is it gonna end? When is it gonna end? Now pick one. All right, uh, uh, <laughs> Daniel Suarez. Yeah, he just never has any luck. I'm sorry. He's always my go-to suck pick now for these pro invitations. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. He's been kicked uh-huh. out like two times, so I'm yeah. Go. Come on, man. Come on. Don't get kicked out this time. Just finish the race, and you'll be fine. I think. <laughs> I don't know. Ailey, who's your pick? <laughs> That's my goal. Well, since I'm not racing, I might just go with your guys' pick on this one because I don't. I don't know. I haven't really watched like some of the backgrounders, like what they've done, or the people that are right I've only really watched like the few top. Uh, three battling no so. there's not I'll, I'll be honest there's not a there's not a whole lot of science that 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 uh, that goes into making these picks either <laughs> like yeah sometimes it's yeah. just like I'll okay yeah. too, so. yeah. uh i'll go with daniel i mean love daniel <laughs> ben always been nice to me you were a great guy but like i'm sorry man <laughs> it's nothing personal it's just for this week that's I it mean, yeah. when, when, you, when you get kicked out two times there in this little season so yeah like yeah it ain't working out <laughs> well i guess for my pick i t- tried to think long and hard and clint boyer yeah Clint <laughs> boyer is just every so nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh he is he's awesome like every time uh, i've been able to talk to him he's awesome but yeah. he is god awful at eye racing he's the only person i've ever seen mm-hmm get up to the lead, and then blow his engine literally half a lap. Yeah, later, so. I was like, what happened? <laughs> like, come on, man. Everything was just going super good. But no, I can't, mm-hmm. can't catch a break ever. All right, so Dark Horse picks. Ooh. Who we got? Okay, I'm going to go with uh, – I'll go with Clint Boyer this time. Um, you know what? Just because <laughs> – wait. Just because, just because I said yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah, why. Well, yeah, just because, yeah, I mean, he's usually the suck pick, and usually that's my go-to, but, I mean – he showed some promise at Talladega. I know it's Talladega, but hopefully he can come back and get a top 10. That would, that would be a considered a win for him in this case. You know? uh, all right. Well, Is John re- Hunter any good? Oh, he's very good. Oh, he's, he's very pretty good. good. So I, I, I feel like, I, I, I I feel like since good. he's younger. Yeah, oh, yeah, I feel like since he's younger generation kind of grew up around it, I'll probably go with John Hunter for that oh, one. Yeah. No, that's a all safe right. pick. Yeah, he's really good. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I think for my underdog pick, I'm going to go with Ryan Priest. He's been showing a lot of promise there in these I racing events, and he's a driver who has a background in running short tracks, and that usually plays well into Dover as well. Well, as the chat knows, I love the old school guys, and one of the guys who's come out of retirement, who is not Dale Jr. I'm not that predictable. Uh, <laughs> will be uh, my my pick, and that's Bobby Labani. Mm -hmm. I like Bobby Labani, and he's shown a lot of improvement when Clint Boyer isn't purposely wrecking him. It all it's it's all ten degrees of Clint here. Yeah, um, but I think Labani is a good top ten pick. I just think it's funny, like he's he's ran his entire time. Like Truex is just like I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's like I keep getting confused. I'm like, oh, Truex well, is like the under like, oh, the wait, radar. No. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Labani is like under the radar the whole time. Like I'm just yeah. minding my own business. Please leave me alone. Like, <laughs> just want to do well. Yeah. Uh, so with that, who's gonna win? Who's, Who's going to win? win? It's not win. It's win on the It's show. win. Um, so uh, I got to go with Bobby Labonte. You just you keep saying my you keep saying my picks, man. I don't know why. Like, I, I had this planned out. You're just like, unoriginal. That's the problem. I, I guess so. But no, nah, like, <laughs> no, nah, Bobby Labonte, I mean, like you said before, he's been underrated. Like, he's just been mm -hmm. low-key in these races. He hasn't really, like, stood out. I, I, I don't know if he really ran eye racing a whole lot before this, like, before this whole pro invitational stuff, but maybe he might get the hang of it. I mean, he's had some success at Dover in the past in real life, so, yeah. Bobby Bobby. Well, he, he, he does a lot of work with NBC, and, you know, mm -hmm. Parker Kligerman's, like, his partner in the esports world, so he's probably actually oh, more involved he, than you'd think. Is, yep. he on, is he on NBC? I thought it was I, Jeff Burton. Or no, it's Jeff Burton who's on. I thought oh, he was on Fox. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I got on. The Bonnie is on Fox. Sorry. Sorry from time to time. I don't know why I just thought of Jeff Burton. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> We're both graying okay. and older. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if I'm sounding cliche because I saw a picture on Twitter of Corey LaJoy, I think, like battling for a win, but can I go with him? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Was he battling for a win or was I just tripping? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, he, he almost he, won. He, yeah. okay. He finished, okay. finished second just barely to Bowman. So. Yeah, Perfect, no, right I, there. I thought he had <laughs> that win. I, I see the chat's pick is uh, Timmy. Oh, yeah, Timmy. Timmy, Timmy. Timmy. of course. Yeah. Danny, who you got? Uh, bring up the meme. I'm going to say back to back for Bowman, mostly because of how close he came to winning <laughs> this race in real life last year. <laughs> You always pick Bowman, man. Stop. Haley, <laughs> you, Haley so I, hey, we've, I have not we've, picked this man in weeks. Because there hasn't been a race in. Well, okay. I mean, a race, a race, <laughs> I'll, I'll explain this. We have been doing this show now for two and a half years, and probably three or four times Danny hasn't picked Bowman as either a dark horse or a win pick. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, again, if we did like a bingo thing, it would be fishing and, and Bowman for him, and then probably like stuttering for me and – Darian not pronouncing words. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. we all okay. have it so, so long story short, Haley, we all have a personality. So Yeah. Uh -huh. We all have exactly. been memed and we've been made fun of on the show oh more times God. than I can count. <laughs> yeah, just like John I Deere. feel that. Yeah. And then it makes me question. I'm like, oh my God, am I really like that? Oh my god, I can't do that. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> It's all Screw fun. you guys. I yeah, know what to do. It's all, it's all <laughs> I'm just gonna be with that one. But but I mean, just just wait till you know one day when when you're in the cup series, we'll be probably picking Haley Deegan every week. So yeah, well, probably I... so. Yeah, probably. As long as we're not on every single, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, real quick, Steve. Thanks for the two ninety nine. Says congrats on the hundred years. Thanks, man. To hundred more. So thank you, man. Uh, so my win pick, uh, I'm not gonna try and go off on a limb whatsoever on this one. No, I'm not picking Dale Jr. again. Um, I'm going to pick William Byron and I hope that he brings back Rusty's scheme because that was pretty badass. Oh, oh yeah. 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 He's got to run that. And in real life too, he's got to run it too. Uh, they they got to run that in real life. That was a yeah. nice, that was a nice car. And then you got to invite Rusty out too and have him sit on the pit box. Cause he oh, made yeah. that. He made that. So I'm like, you might as well bring him out. <laughs> yeah. So that's picks. Uh, thank you guys in the chat. Uh, really quick, Darian, we're on your channel next week, right? No, oh, my God. Yeah. And we got like what, uh, like 10 million guests on next week. Isn't well, like I think a, we got like three confirmed, but we have like see that's a, a lot right there. That's already a lot right there. <laughs> see straight up. See, that's who we got? Who do we have confirmed? And please say the one that's the most ironic of them last, because that, I find that so funny. Uh, hold up. I'm always late pulling up the schedule than you all the time. You always pull it up more first. Probably. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, okay. Don't say the don't say the one that we've had planned for a while, just because I want I, that one will be funny for for funny effect. Uh, wait, hold on. There's only one name in bold here though i'll just say the people who might be on because okay, i'm pretty sure two of them are two of them for, that are for you know youtuber wise all right so, so yeah so the people that might be on okay so grip dog and real Rabin, uh two uh well-known youtubers dude i've been 
it's been it's been a while since we did the whole summer showdown which Haley won by the way and i had to explain mm-hmm. that to Haley too like because remember mm-hmm. Haley, you signed the die cast and yeah you i remember what the and, hell is this, and you know? i don't think there was oh. ever said whoa whoa we got fifty dollars <laughs> wait thank, a minute thank <laughs> you blue jimmy <laughs> uh <laughs> yes yeah, thank you first, <laughs> uh thank you blue jimmy for the fifty dollars holy crap uh 100 episodes wow you guys have changed my life forever you guys have brought the community uh and if it wasn't for you guys all of our lives would be so much different love you guys so much happy 20th birthday to you on saturday yes happy oh, yeah, birthday man yeah happy birthday dude yeah for real but Thank anyways you. so back to the story that we were talking about uh, our buddy griff Dog, he did the summer showdown you ended up being the winner for like a series of simulated races and stuff mm-hmm. so we were watching the whole time and when uh like you won Immediately, I sent out a group chat to these two guys and a few other people who helped like make it. And I was like, guys, we got to do something special for for Griff. Like, let me get in touch with this guy who makes custom NASCAR diecast. And I took all the screenshots of the car that you know you 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 were in, mm-hmm. and then uh, sent them to him. It's like, can you make this? He said, yeah, I can make that. So I was like, okay, how much do you need? Blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, we're all PayPal money. And then next thing you know, he's got it. He, I told him, do an unboxing video of this because I'm, I'm sending you something, some kind of rare piece of NASCAR. Yeah, he had no idea what it was. Like, he thought it was going to be uh-huh. some other die cast. But, like, it, it yeah. literally is rare because uh-huh. it's not even one, rare. One, It's only one. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it worked out that he got to go meet you and get a sign. I thought that was awesome. Yeah, was what fun. race was that at? Was that at Iowa? No, North Wilkesboro. Think... North Wilkesboro. No, 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 Darian. And it was in Iowa where she signed it. Wait, what? Oh, I thought you were talking about the. Oh, I thought you were talking about the oh. NR race. My bad. Another meme. I thought Darian. you were talking about the NR race. No, I wish it was North Wilkesboro. I was like, I haven't yeah, raced th- there no, yet. No, no, no. <laughs> don't, don't, don't you remember having to go over all the grass and stuff in the track and all yeah, that? Yeah, no, I mean, no, no. So she signed it there. Yeah, in Iowa, not North mm-hmm. Wilkesboro. But yeah. yeah, I remember another, that. Another meme for Darian. Yeah, uh, really see, quick, thanks. Out. Thanks to uh, Inside Uranus uh, for the $10. Thank, congrats on 100 Great to see the growth among you guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you. And then, so Darian, who's that Who's that uh, big, okay. big guest that's uh, Let's for see. comedic effect? Let's see. Uh, you know who it is. Okay. You're the one who planned him on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wind Val. So, yeah, Wind Val's confirmed. It's weird. I don't know. The way this list is, it's like, yeah, some people confirm, some not. But, yeah, Wind Val's like, he's he's 100% confirmed right now. He'll be on the podcast next week. So, so basically what you're saying is we, we've had Haley's side of story, and now we got to see what his side of story is next week. Yeah, if we want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll just Ooh. laugh about it, too. We'll just laugh about it, too. That's it. <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks, Cody Workman, for the 199. Congrats on 100. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Haley having a original picks so oh yeah that's right yeah uh <laughs> so usually we end the show with a dale call um i need to but i think we're going to do something a little bit different for this one so let me just get the person who's going to end the show off for us really quick okay. if he's if he's watching he'll come in the door right now but i'm just, i'm gonna go check but uh yeah chat keep the chat entertained darian yeah 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 so guys you know what time it is it's time uh for well this is another edition of the nascar weekly podcast this one was a little different it was the 100th episode appreciate mm-hmm. Haley coming on of course really that's peace. Coming that's on. Peace. and uh also as well uh, also uh, tune in next week uh four guests all right we're gonna end the show so, so, yeah. this way Hush, <laughs> and it, it broke the mic again it broke the mic <laughs> 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 <laughs>